Conservation Commission is sponsoring this year. It's kind of a, it could be a kind of a special one. I hope it is. Uh, it'll be in the Bliss Pond Town Forest on Saturday, October the 5th, starting at 9.30. It's not signed. Uh, no, it's not signed. It's supposed to be personal. <laughs> I'm sorry? It's supposed to be personal, so I have to be signed. <laughs> oh, well, it's not. Stephanie's up there. Sure, I'll give you mine. Because um, <laughs> and <laughs> you uh, it for her. Eric Sorensen is going to be leading this. Oh boy! It's uh, it, it's it's a I hope an enlightening uh, discovery and, and walk in our biggest town forest. But it's also uh, uh, the select board have decided that this is sort of the beginning of an, a period of public discussion about what we hope to do with the town forest. Um, I guess it's okay for me to say that it kind of got kicked off because I've had this proposal that I've been planning to present for several years um, that to, the, to the no to the to the conservation commission oh. just to begin the discussion about what are we going to do with the town forest in the mm -hmm. future um, and my proposal is is that we um, dedicate the, the Bliss Pond town forest to be an old growth regeneration forest um, and so we agreed uh, it has to be this way of course that this is something that the town uh, as a community has to decide. It's not for the Conservation Commission to decide it. And so this is just the first uh, of what I think will be a series of events and activities to try to, first of all, get people to, to actually um, find out about the West Pond Town Forest. I'm just, I live next to it, so I, I'm in there every, almost every day of the year. But I'm astonished at how many people don't know anything about it, don't know where it is, never been in it. Um, and so I, I hope that you know some folks will come to this who've never been there before. Um, and if we can afterwards, we probably have a little talk. People are interested in the um, uh, Old West Church at the end of the thing to maybe talk a little bit more about the things that Eric raises. But if you don't know Eric Sorensen, he is Mr. Forrest in Vermont. He's a state employee who is the natural communities ecologist for the state, um, and he literally wrote the book. Um, and there's something called <coughs> Vermont Conservation Design, which is a blueprint for how the, at least the scientists in the state are proposing we go forward to deal with climate change and the other right. challenges that affect our forests. Um, and there's a modest little tie-in with the Bliss Pond Town Forest in that initiative, yeah. I think. Anyway. But anyway, I, I, I encourage you all to come. Uh, when, when I, talk about it or not, up to you, but uh, it's a wonderful little um, place. I, I hope if you don't know it, you can come and discover it. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Thanks uh, Larry. Thank Anybody you. else have anything that's not on the agenda? No, I was kidding. I was going to say I'm here for a big issue. That's because I'm Peter's driver. So <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good. So. See, we got two of you for the I price would. of one. <laughs> you let him drive you? Or? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sorry. All right. Um, any changes or additions to the agenda? All right, so um, I guess maybe Alfred will be here at some point because we have this ROW application to do, but why don't we get started with the Route 14 commuter bus project? And maybe we do know all of us, do you want us to, we can introduce ourselves. Denise Wheeler. Cliff Emmons, Kelly Selector. Rose Pelchuk. I'm Katie Lane Cross, the reporting secretary. Sharon Wynn Fannin, select board. John Brayback, select board. And do you know, you want to go around the room? We already know who Larry is. Let me just introduce myself, Candy Andrews, here at the seat. 
Uh, Nick D'Agostino from Rural Community Transportation. Bobby Weinger, Central Vermont Regional Planning. Karen McNeil, I'm the alternate for the Transportation Advisory Council Committee. 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 Jan Olson, Chair of Planning. I'm Barry Bernstein from East Cows. <laughs> Peter John Q from East Cows and a uh, transit user. Good, great. How do you want to get started, Bonnie? I'm going to hand it right over to Nick okay. and let him talk to you about the service. I'm along for the ride. And your prompt questions. Did you guys ride to together? No. no. We came from the opposite direction. If only there were a bus. For the figurative yeah. ride, there not the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so thank you. Um, I'm from Monroe Community Transportation, the executive director. Um, probably is not familiar to you, RCT, because uh, RCT, the public transit provider for the Northeast Kingdom, so uh, Caledonia, Orleans, Essex counties, but also the demand response, so Medicaid, non-emergency medical transportation for Memorial County as well. Um, so when VTrans relocated its uh, staff from the National Life Building to the downtown ferry a few months ago, uh, there was suddenly a desire to have transportation to downtown Barrie. So um, the idea was that um, we were going to share a route along from, or from Hardwick to Barrie uh, and share that with Green Mountain Transit, who is your provider. Mm -hmm. uh, we do that with the US2 commuter, which goes from St. John's Barrie to Montpelier, and we, so we pass Green Mountain Transit. Is that the red buses? So we're the red buses. So um, the, the idea was that we were going to share this route as well. Um, it has evolved so that just RCT would handle this transportation route. Um, and also it has expanded from Hardwick into Morrisville. And the reason is because we have buses stationed in Morrisville because we do demand response and non-emergency medical transportation out of the Morrisville office. Um, so instead of having a bus empty from Morrisville to Hardwick, Hardwick and then opening the doors to the public. Um, the idea is now to open the doors in Morrisville. Uh, so we'll go along Route 15 to Hardwick through Walcott and then pick up people in Hardwick, um, Woodbury, Callis, and then we are going to meet. You're not current. stopping at Walcott? We are going to stop at Walcott. Okay. Uh, the idea is that we are going to meet and have a transfer point at the uh, Washington Electric Co op in East Montpelier so that we're going to meet the US2 commuter. So that if you're in Callis and you want to get to Montpelier, you'll transfer to our bus in uh, East Montpelier, and you'll be able to go to Montpelier at several stops in Montpelier. So where will you stop in Callis? Good question. And if you have a suggestion, please no. let me know. Because um, right now, it looks like there's not really any place with a great amount of parking. Um, so we're going. We're we're thinking um, the East Dallas store is just a pull over and pick up spot. Dangerous. But if you have anywhere else, there is no place people for people over. to park there. Right, and it doesn't necessarily have to mean we will pick up at park and rides and places that have parking mm -hmm. available. Um, if there's no parking available, we still want to be able to give people the mm -hmm. opportunity to get on the bus or to at least flag down the bus. I mean, East Dallas store would be great. But as I said, there's really no place to park. You have to pull over to the other side of the road where that little park is. Yep. There's the East Callis Post Office. Okay. Um, again, that's not really a place for public parking. It's for the post office. Right. Um, have there's you, a big lot there. The bus can turn around. Yeah, yeah but not if people are parking. Cars, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if people right. are right. parking, that's... Right, and there's not really oh, you know, daytime, long-term parking there that I'm aware of. Have you thought about, like, asking a landowner on Route 14 to see if they would, um, Tim, Tim, can I, can I yeah. me, to see if they would have a place where somebody could set up a parking so spot? So that would be, that's part of the reason I'm here is to find out from you folks as to where, uh, where you think a good mm -hmm. place to park would be. Because we're, you know, we're out of our, we're out of our territory yeah. right now, although we're very excited for this. We don't have the geographical knowledge 
service this area mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so Good. wait a minute. Let's wait a minute. Um, Sharon wanted to speak, and then Jan, and then Karen. The, the East Callis Rec Field, I think we, when this idea first we came did. up, we kicked him. And I don't know if you guys have, did that get ruled out for some? The that, there is Callis a ton Rec of parking field, here. I, the East Callis Rec Field folks are not interested in having a parking no. ride thing there that I'm aware of. But there is a plot across from that Rec Field that. Is that the Dwinnell? It's, mm -hmm. it's owned by Dwinnells, as I understand. And uh, it's, there's a, I don't know how, I mean, we had thought one time of having a parking right there. Mm -hmm. We actually drew it out. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> and, um, um, and it's, it's got enough for four or five right. cars. It's mm -hmm. just a pasture right, right now. Um, Alfie, you know, mows it down. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I mean, it might be amenable. Uh, Dwinnell might be willing to know take that quarter mm -hmm. half an acre and contribute let, it to parking <laughs> I don't know. or at least let us use it if he doesn't want to yeah. we donate it we were applying for the what is it the municipal small road connections or whatever right. it, it was a small grant so for that we wrote up a description of what mm -hmm. that parking What's the what's the what's the group that I went to a couple of the meetings that's been wanting to get some kind of busing and car share? What's the name of that? Well, that's I mean it was the energy group that yeah, right. was the transportation energy group that yeah. became you know Vermont debate and Vermont. That's what I'm thinking of. Callis BT. Callis yeah. BT. Is so this is I mean this is Mr. kind of keeping in line with what we've talked about in town over the years but never thought it would come to be but it sounds like if the state employees want it then it can happen yeah, yeah go ahead Karen. um the rec association owns the parking lot where the post office is mm -hmm. right yeah because they own that building mm -hmm. and so we had that bandied about the idea of even getting their cooperation to put up temporary parking, you know, just mm -hmm. voluntarily, not not anything formal, but to allow two car spaces to be reserved mm -hmm. for people that want to use it. I mean, I'm sure there are liability issues, but I think that maybe a request from the select board to the rec, the rec Center Board Association mm -hmm. to consider these things right. mm -hmm. would have a lot more weight than a pup, some people which they think are, you know, Maple Corner people. <laughs> I won't say anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we could do that if we have some kind of a definite what the plan is, a time schedule. Um, we could, you know, we could contact the rec center board. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. That's, that's, it's not a field. It's a huge parking lot. It's right. got everything we need. As long as we could make sure it's not overnight parking. Right. Right. Yeah, and we can, uh, because it's not an official park and ride, uh, so if it is a state-owned park and ride, you can't impose those types of restrictions, but this would not be a state Ride, so mm -hmm. we can impose whatever restrictions there are. In fact, we have just park and ride in St. Johnsbury is under construction now, and so we negotiated with mm -hmm. the town to provide a temporary lot. And the restrictions are Monday through Friday, six to eight thirty, no overnight parking, no weekend parking. Well, there's another couple chairs over here. Um, so, if you, there was another space on Route 14 that was owned, property owned by a private citizen, do you pay rent for the use of that property? Um, we don't pay rent to anyone now, but I mean, it's not out of the question. If that's, mm -hmm. if that's what it's going to take in order to get parking, folks are going to use it. Yeah, I mean, I have, a, it. I have a thought, but I don't know if it's a conflict of interest or, but I guess I can bring it up. My son lives right on Route 14, 
and he has a lot of land there. And it's, um, folks know where Dave Jeffrey lives? It's right across the street from Dave Jeffrey. And it's really close to the road. I don't know if he would be interested in letting folks park there and you know what what that might entail, but if we're if this other doesn't work out then we could approach him. Sure. Yeah, this is something having been involved in transportation for a long time. This is something that's been talked about for so long mm -hmm. that I would really feel a big missed opportunity for the town not to find a way to find parking mm -hmm. if you guys are going to do it. Yeah. It's really, a, it's, it's one of the many missing links in public transportation. It's, yeah, for sure. So we're, it's definitely on. We are doing it. It's just a matter of where he wants to stop. You know, and if you think about uh, like College Green in Montpelier, there's nowhere to park, but we still have a bus out there. Yeah. And obviously it's a little different because there's sidewalks, you've got, uh, you're in this sort of a city, uh, you don't necessarily need to park your car right in the corner of College Green to be able to get on the bus. You can just walk there. Um, so, I mean, that's not the most ideal situation here. If we were able to pull over at the store or wherever mm -hmm. it would be, obviously the ideal situation would be you could park your car, leave it, right. get on the bus, come back. And, back to the and this says it's going to start on October 7th. It is scheduled to start on October 7th. So it could still, you know, this is going to be kind of an evolving okay. thing. Um, if we could just start with some place where, like I said, you don't need to be able to park, but we could. Just to pick up for it's now. It's not going to be, we're not going to go so far off of the route that it's going to create, we're going to wreak havoc on the schedule that we have put right. together. Right. Um, so anywhere in town is going to be okay as long as right. it's not too far off. Of the I think John wanted to. So um, north on Route 14, north of East Kyle's Village, takes you to South Woodbury. If you went past the camps, there's the the South Woodbury Church there, and it's, there's already a kind of a de facto commuter parking nice. lot happening there. Mm -hmm. And the whole north side of town kind of flows that way, I, I know, when I go on Route 14. That's a good idea. And, you know, it wouldn't be too far out of the way. That's the town office, right? Yeah, that's yeah, the town office. Yeah, so we just came out there. Okay, yeah. so you got that. And there's also then, coming back south, there's a, a place, WCI Construction. Oh, right, right. And then there's a ball field there. That yeah. Historically, Is that the radio ball station field. thing? No, it's anymore, really, but it's the construction site. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's but it's kind of a there's a lot of like land that's just not being utilized, and I, I would expect that there's something that could be worked out there. Yeah, so that's that, a good idea. That's right on the town line. So, so the Woodbury Town Office lot, do they are they? Is that something you're going to be able to use? It sounded like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. In fact, they they yeah like you said. They're Mm -hmm. Okay, Pam and Karen. Yeah, I just, in terms of the post office lot, I just want to remind the select board that that is one of the stormwater sites mm -hmm. um, that was chosen as one of the top five priority sites. And um, Toby is interested in furthering that to final design and will, of course, come to you about mm -hmm. that idea. Um, but we have agreement with the rec center, so just the rec association, excuse me. Um, so just keep that in mind. If that yeah. becomes a site, there may be some construction yeah. interruption mm -hmm. when and if that goes to okay. implementation. So okay. it's just something to think about. Good. Lots going on in these accounts. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to bring up the safety concerns at that area by the East Cal store. Right. Um, because these huge granite trucks mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. faster than the speed limit, and they they're carrying granite, it's so they can't stop. It's the MBI truck. The MBI truck. So, <laughs> so that's yeah. been a concern expressed mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. the people that live in East Calais. And I think that if the stop was by the East Calais store, and maybe even if it was somewhere else right in the village, the only real place that people could park that's not private parking unless they got special permission from the rep association one-on-one -on -one permission mm -hmm. would be at independence park i think that's what it's called the little park across mm -hmm. they'd pull over on route 14 there which right. could be okay 
probably the plow trucks won't be happy with that. The store might not be happy either because um, customers use that. Yeah. And then, so then the concern is also where the stop is going north. So having a stop right in front of East Cow's store going north would be really dangerous, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of that traffic. Now, ideally, yeah. our buses are all equipped with wheelchair lifts. Mm -hmm. So ideally, Right. Mm -hmm. That would be my concern there. Yeah. So, so the the again the, the rec center lot that Pam said will be seeing some renovation we expect. Um, that you'd actually have to if the bus were coming southbound, they'd have to make a right and go off you know, over a little, little bridge at, off Route 14, very short distance. But they'd be off the, the busy that's highway that's and it's much safer. Yeah. And then people could cross. Route 14 is that's like deadly there. Yeah, it is. There's a blind bend coming north. It says 35 people, truck right on through. It's it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. So right. any any uh, any information is much appreciated. Yeah. Obviously, want to make it safe for the bus, the driver, and the passengers. Yeah. On mm -hmm. and off. Yeah. And we want to make it as convenient as possible too, so you park your car and go on the bus. Um. I think. You and next, and then Jan. Peter. Peter. Um, the other thing, and I realize this is evolving, but once some of these places are established, um, personally, and definitely a vested interest would be to make sure you have a bike rack there, um, mm -hmm. because I would be coming with my bike and either locking it there and leaving it, or depending on where I am, I'm going to have my bike put it on the box. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. The so buses yeah, have bike racks on them, too, right? The buses do have bike racks, yeah. Okay. But it's, I mean, it's definitely, as Barry said, it's definitely something that's been needed for ages, and yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely right. <laughs> yeah. Great. See, you already got one customer. Great. <laughs> Barry? No, Jan. Uh, it's kind of two-pronged. Uh, have you done a study as to north and south of, of Calus? I mean, like, how many riders there might be? So, out of curiosity. So this isn't really a normal way to go about creating a route. Or just um, we were kind of handed this and told, okay. here's your route. Um, <laughs> so we expanded it into more, from Morrisville to Hardwick, but really it was kind of dictated by the okay. to say we're going to create the, we want to create Hardwick to bear. There's what another it? site, like, and I know it's not ideal, but there's a, there's a, that little area off of Cataract land on Lightning Ridge. That's what I was just going to say. Right there on the corner of Pekin? On the corner, and, uh, not Pekin, but it's Lightning Ridge. Oh, I was when you turn right, right to the school, uh -huh. Max Gray, Max Gray, yeah, right, Max Gray, Lightning, yeah, and there's this little area there next to the log cabin. Next to the log, yeah. to the to the log cabin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that might be a place because a lot of people park there anyway. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not a space that's like buildable or anything. No, and and I know that I've seen people park there, and I've also seen campers there once in a while. You know, I mean, they're just there. But not, there for the weekend, but there's there's people there that do use it for parking. Yeah, is that that's town a, land or is that? I know it's, it's private, private, but private. you could but you could approach the um, the landowners. There's also there used to be a house there, and I think it burned. It's on the corner of Pekin and Route 14. There's a oh, yeah. piece of land there. I think it's yeah. full of but it's not Japanese too, knotweed or something. Yeah, that's right. It's pretty crappy land. <laughs> it's actually. Good land. It's just full of mess. Sand, but yeah. Sandy. Great for parking lot. But that's I don't know who owns that. Who um oh, what's his last name? We knew who owned it. There's a woman in Waterbury at one Yeah, his her son. Bill. 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 He used to, Sounds he about, like he owned about time for a while. Mm -hmm. Oh really? He's an actor. Not Bill Blatchley. Yeah. Um, oh. Um, Give us no. a few minutes, we'll come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> I could go in the Lister file. I mean, uh, I'll yeah. it. It'll come to me sometime. And then I'll let them know. And we'll reconvene at that point. Later. So what else do you want to... What else do you want to hear from us tonight? Or do you need? Or would you like uh, so to... Just to finish. So, so the... Um, the bus will travel from here to East Montpelier, where it will meet with the current US2 commuter, which comes from St. John's. In that parking ride there. At the, yeah, the Washington Electric Co-op parking ride. 
Uh, so if you are want to go to Montpelier, you can transfer to that bus. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to go to East Mont or if you want to continue on to downtown Barry, you just remain on the bus. Um, RCT's buses are all fare free. Wow. So it would be free for you to ride from here to Marsville if you want, or all the way to Montpelier. Wow. Um, we With do, your bicycle. Yeah. And then and you can get on the bike. And so our, our US-2, because this is, is meant to tram, connect at East Montpelier with the US-2 commuter, our US-2 commuter is set up so that it will meet the GMT link to Waterbury and to Burlington. So you can actually get from here to Burlington now, uh, fare from right. Montpelier, and then you would help. But you have to pay a fare for GMT? For GMT, yes. How come? Why? Um, so the difference is we the transit providers get to to choose. Um, there's a couple different thoughts. Our thought is the, the, that a fare is a, is a obstacle to someone getting on the bus. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get more customers that way or more uh, people on the bus. And RCT is a lot more rural and has a lot fewer customers or passengers than GMT. So if you think about how many people are riding the bus in Burlington compared to how many people are riding the bus mm -hmm. in St. Johnsbury, whereas they may be looking at hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a year in shares, we're looking at like 40 bucks a day. Yeah. And we're paying somebody eight hours to collect that money, count the money, uh, we're putting processes in place to make sure the money doesn't get stolen, mm -hmm. we're depositing the money. Uh, and also, the fares do not count towards the local match that's required to match the federal grants. That's what I was going to ask next. So <laughs> other, other forms of money do count towards that local match, but not fares. So the way that it almost looks on paper is that fare actually kind of reduce, doesn't reduce the match. It kind of reduces the grant, at least on paper. So it's just not worth it to us to, mm -hmm. to do that. Um, GMT, they, they look at it differently. They make a lot more money on the fare, so it's, <coughs> it's a charge of fare. So my next question was going to be, according to this notice, RCT does ask for financial assistance from towns. So we do ask for every town that we serve, and like I said, mostly the North East Kingdom and the Loyal. Um, we do either go through the appropriation process or town meeting petitions mm -hmm. to ask for some sort of a donation. Um, the reason that we do that is mm -hmm. because um, we do have a significant amount of money to, to, to donate or to match for a bus. Um, mm -hmm. One of our new buses that is going to be dedicated towards this route when it arrives in December or January. Um, we're going to have to pay 10% of a $120,000 price tag on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, once the current grant cycle runs out, and this is 100% funded as far as operations goes for three years from VTrans, but once that three years is up, assuming it's successful and VTrans wants to continue this mm -hmm. service, it will transfer into a different funding source, and at that time, all of the fuel, all of the driver's wages and benefits are going to be 50% of RCT. All the administration that goes into paying my salary, keeping the lights on, that's going to be 10% on RCT. So there's a significant amount of money that uh, goes into it. We do what we can by asking for donations, by selling advertising on the buses, by providing other types of services that we can charge a little more money for using our volunteer services. Mm -hmm. um, but anything really would help. Because we, I mean, we have a appropriation list in town that we do every year at town meeting for various different sources. Are you looking to be on like that kind of list? What are we talking about for a donation? Oh, if you want to write a check right now, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't have access to that. <laughs> um, you know, we were thinking it would be grateful for anything from like five hundred to a thousand dollars would okay. be wonderful. So you're not. Um, okay, I wasn't would, sure. We would. Gladly participate in any kind of mm -hmm. uh, appropriation procedure that you have in place. Right. Well, we do have a procedure for new people that new people that want to get on this list. Mm -hmm. There's a form on our website to fill out to ask for um, an appropriation, and we're going to soon be into town meeting cycle. So yes, if you want to give that a look ahead of time, I don't know what the deadline for submitting that is. It probably says on the website. Is it a petition process to start for it? No, you just fill out two No, 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 just an application. One page. Yeah, yeah, it's easy. Very. We try to keep it as simple as possible. And if you do it once and voters approve it, we don't make you do it again every year like some towns do, unless you want to change the amount or okay. mm -hmm. it gets shot down. Okay. Nick, right. know that when you do that, 
you're starting, you're applying now or when you get around to the form, it goes to the, t to the voters in March, but it's for the next fiscal year. Right. So, right. So, 21. Yeah, so we're 20, talking well, about 2020. A July. Okay. July 1st, 2020. 2020. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, you want to ask before March because we. We start putting the town report and stuff together. We'll January. be working on it next, over the next few months. Mm -hmm. Karen? Um, how would the success be calibrated? So, so VTrans does have uh, markers of success or non-success. Um, so I will need to find out from VTrans as to what category of service this is going to count as. Um, so if it goes anywhere from urban to rural commuter to um, circulator, uh, there's a couple different categories this may fit into, and that makes a difference as to what the success bars are. But basically, it's how many people are you getting on the bus per hour, um, and how many miles you're driving, and there's a calculation, and then it's benchmarked across the state, and that's uh, based upon other rural states in the country. And what right. the I mean, it's going to take a while to get the word out. I mean, the Absolutely. people, the red buses are quite catchy because they really stand out. Um, you know, when people see them stopping, they're going to be like, whoa, what's that? So the, so the first year, it's, you know, we're not expecting the buses to be packed the first year. It's mm -hmm. getting the word out, like you mm -hmm. said. It's um, calibrating everything, making sure the schedule is working. So year two, three, we should continue to see it. Mm -hmm. Do you have suggestions for ways to get the word out? What um, works in Cal? Front porch forum. Mm -hmm. Posting something on the town website, having something available like a one-page flyer to hand out at town meeting. Okay. Um, word of mouth is one of the best. We can send it to various <coughs> Google groups in town. If you have somebody that can come on town meeting, yeah. I know probably limited, but that really helps. Somebody that can Yeah, especially if it's an added item. Um, and, you know, we can post flyers around different places in town, the post office, the stores, town office. Barry? Yeah, I just want to mention, since I've picked up a number of hitchhikers in the last few decades, there are a lot of people who may use this service who don't have a car. So, you know, while you're looking for where parking is and stuff, you have to look at convenience for people who really do need this service mm -hmm. in the end. Yeah. Unfortunately, I know your hours will probably be tied into, you're talking about just two trips. Yeah, it's starting as a commuter route to yeah. start as something. Yeah, and but the people take successful, we can add more. lower income jobs that have to get in. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important. So you'd be coming through around 715 or something uh, like that. That's my question right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's you know, got a schedule time, but we have yeah. to meet yeah. at the, yeah. we have to meet oh, at the rec lot in the morning at 705, so it's actually based upon, surprisingly, the state schedule. So everything is, yeah, so everything's really kind of based on us getting that transfer spot mm -hmm. on time uh, to be able to meet it. So and yeah. that whole thing is, that whole schedule goes to commuter is based on Typical state employee schedule. Mm -hmm. But if the but if but if you find that there's more need, then you yeah, could then add time. Be trans to add more runs. Yep. Yeah, we just have to mm -hmm. prove that there's it's viable, and that there's a demand, and then we can we can ask mm -hmm. for more. And you don't have like a thing set up for donations for people that could afford to that can afford hey, to ride the bus. Pay hey, you know pay as, a donation oh, thing in the, the bus. bus. Yeah, you don't um, do that. We don't have fare boxes on the bus, but um, it's just a thought. So I've been with RCT for nine months, and a lot of things are changing, and that's one thing that should change. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any other questions, Bonnie? Anything else? I think I pointed out all the things we talked about metrics. What does the bus look like? I usually ask you that question. Um, so this oh, bus is going to look more. Yeah, it's going to be the. the the bus that's going to be servicing this will be more of a cutaway type, so it would be you know, like a, a pickup truck or a van front end um, with the bus pushing the back. It's not going to look like a heavy duty city type CCTA Burlington bus. Actually, our US2 commuter is that type of bus. This is going to be more of like the buses that you would see in the area up here. Like can I have a shuttle? Um, so the new bus that we'll be using will have 22 to 24 passenger bus, has wheelchair. That's if, that's if there are no wheelchair spots. Mm -hmm. 
and usually the wheelchair spots take up four. And what color is it going to be? Um, it'll be white with blue and green. Oh, come on, not red. So they'll start with red and then We'll shoot. start with red, to get you used to that, and then we'll wean you off the red. <laughs> I'll go with I'll orange. I'll bring you into the 20 No, not orange. <laughs> <laughs> You'll like the new look. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, this is a great service. We've been trying to figure out how to make this happen for years through different various groups and looking at things, and until the state decided it, this is good. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And if there's something you need us to do, Bonnie knows how to get a hold of me. Great, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Thank you. You're not going to stay for the other presentation? <laughs> We're off to the spot Oh, that's what we're doing. Uh, right. We'll They're on sports I just wanted to tell you something funny. When I grew up in Connecticut, the superintendent's name was Nick Diodestino, and he was a wonderful man. Yeah. He was a wonderful Did you know Nick Diodestino? I grew up with one who was awesome. Yeah. 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 So I just love your name, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Thank you for coming. Good night, everybody. Did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick, do you have to see that? Hey, He's a superintendent. How are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. come up and sit with us. It's better. Huh? It's better. It makes it clear that you're like a so far away. You were the rain. My car is under the tree. You're the main attraction. <laughs> How are the kids? Good. Good. And yours? Yeah. Okay. What year is Jack in? He's first year. Oh, my God. Where is he? All right. <gasps> We're going to do road erosion. Road erosion. Everybody want to come up closer to the table so you can see? Or? Yeah, I just felt too far away there. But um, oh, just take, uh, should we just take one and pass it around? We could. Sure. I printed one, but it's not in color. Okay. That's, I didn't print because like, oh, there's so much color, I thought it's not worth it. You've got one. I can't print the color. I didn't so email you. <clears throat> Did you get the one, most recent one? I emailed Anybody else definitely work? Okay. Okay. Oh, I think Katie should have one. Do you, you want to share? Can I share it? Come on up. Because <coughs> she'll need to reference it for the sure. minute. Sure. 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 Dan, so we Dan have is it. not have coming tonight, so okay. Um, okay. I think there is a little miscommunication there. I'm handling this because he had another meeting in Waitsfield, and he apologizes he couldn't be here. But since I'm so close, we figured I would Jan, do you go over this with you. I got an extra one. I got an extra one. I got a computer screen here. So, um, just uh, wait till John settle. Stephanie? What? Oh, okay. I was just looking. Probably have it on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Printed one. All right, you ready to get started? I'm ready to. I'm ready. To, I'm ready. So, um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and um, with Toby's help, Toby Talbot, uh, in 2017 did a road erosion inventory of the town. And this is something that came down from the state um, so that the town could fulfill this new municipal roads general permit. Uh, the permit came out in 2018, I believe, and it's and all towns in the state are on a schedule to follow this permit and bring um, roads that are connected to water sources, which uh, we term the hydrologically connected roads within a town, bring those up to a certain standard. And that st those standards will help prevent erosion from the dirt roads and from outfalls of paved roads um, prevent the erosion to prevent both sediment and phosphorus entering um, our surface waters and eventually into Lake Champlain. So this all fits under that big <coughs> Lake Champlain cleanup umbrella for phosphorus. So that's, and the permit comes from the state, but um, we at CVRPC are assisting all the towns in our region to do these inventories and to come up with what these reports, which is essentially what's going to be the town's capital plan over a period of years, and I'll go over the schedule with everybody um, to bring them up to standards. 
So if we just want to open, um, I gave you a little bit of the background already. Does anybody need more of a definition of what hydrologically connected actually means? Or is that pretty clear? Got it. Okay. And so it's pretty much, it can even be, a, it can be a road. In this, so let me just go over what, what categories falls under that. So if it's, if it's a road that's within a certain a foot distance from a stream, so it doesn't even have to cross the stream. It can even be just within the river corridor. It's considered hydrologically connected. If it has a drainage culvert that crosses it where that the drainage from that culvert ends up at a stream, it's hydrologically connected. If there's a stream that actually crosses a road, that road is hydrologically connected, of course. And then segments that are about 100 meters long that are uphill of that particular crossing are also considered connected. So it's not just the ones. Or water body, right? Yeah, or water body. Yeah, so it's not just streams. It's also wetlands and ponds and lakes. So, you know, like Gar Road all along um, Number 10 Pond is considered hydrologically connected. Really? Yeah, so, um, you know, the Worcester Road is mm -hmm. considered hydrologically connected because of oh. those ponds. So there's more than just crossing a stream that makes it hydrologically connected. Okay. So, just to clarify that. So I already gave you the background a little bit. So if you turn to um, page four, um, I'd like to just go down to the schedule that the permit from the state actually dictates. Um, so if you look up midway down the page, there's a bulleted number, five, five bulleted um, items there. Um, by July 2018, which has already passed, of course, that municipalities apply for the NRGP coverage and pay the fees. Calus has done that, so they're in compliance, no problem there. And then by fall of 2020, all towns are required to submit a road stormwater management plan. And that's essentially this report plus this table that Toby has that's right on um, the portal at, at DEC, the Department of Environmental Conservation, has a portal where all the data from the inventory gets uploaded, and you can see right on that portal what's high priority, what's very high priority, what's moderate, what's low priority, and I'll go over that. There, I added a table. I was say, is there a link in here somewhere to that? Um, Toby has it. Toby goes on it regularly, but I can I can email that to you. You got it at the shop. Yeah, you got it at the shop. Um, so <clears throat> then the next thing is by January 2020, just this January, the implementation plan is expected to begin. Now, Toby and Alfie are way ahead of that deadline because they've already fixed some of the hydrologically connected roads in so, town. So three comes before two. No, because two is by the fall. By the fall of 2020. You do the inventory and, and you have a plan to by fix. by January 2020. Is that 2021? No, that's 2020. So, so the, plan is, the plan is done. But if you look at the dates, it's the fall. January comes before fall. Right. Oh, duh. That it should be. Well, I, I'll check with Dan on that. You're yeah, right. Just, you're right. You're right. So you're right. we have the right dates. Yep. Thank it might you. be January 2021. It might be January 2021. Yeah. Didn't we check this last time when we went over this? Well, yeah. I have written down 20. from okay. number four, January 2020 started implementation of standards. Yep. From the meeting we had for the yeah. draft. All right, I'll check with you. Yep. Thank you. Good catch. Um, but in any case, you don't have to um, be done with all your very high priority segments until the end of 2025. So we have pretty much six years to implement all the very high priority. And I'll go over which ones those are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these guys are doing good so far. <laughs> yeah, no, we're and then 2037, that's the deadline, the end of that year, that all of them have to meet the standards. We're gonna have yeah. We're gonna have the same standards for the next 
It's a long way. 20. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, oh, you, we, you all probably won't be on this left for that's for sure. Um, I doubt it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be retired too, I hope. But in any case, will the standards change? Maybe if I, I hope not. But you know, if things aren't working for oh, certain change, types of work. segments, you know, who knows what the state's going to do? So I can't promise that things won't change. But um, you can flip over the next page, and um, from the inventory, what we did and what Toby did um, went out every road that's hydrologically connected in town and using an app that's been, um, that actually, the app that we developed is the one we used for Calus um, that was based on what the state wanted to see. The state has their own map app now that we're using for the towns because they, of course, they released this and then, you know, they were like, GIS people figure out how to collect the data. So we did that. Um, so we had our own app for the Calus inventory. Um, and basically, collecting all the information, then we fed all that information up to the, D, the Department of Environmental Conservation portal, which then determined whether a particular segment fully meets the standards, partially meets the standards, or does not meet the standards. So those are the three categories. And um, fully meets means you know everything that you're looking at on a particular road segment, which for a gravel road is, is there berming on the side? You know, sometimes when you drive down a gravel road, there's like a nice hump on the side from the grading or from plowing or whatever. Well, when there's a big berm left over, what can happen is that can cause a lot of erosion within the travel lane. So what the state's asked is to please, you know, get rid of that berm so we don't have erosion within the travel lane. Um, is the road, road crowned properly so that it's not super flat and there's erosion within the travel lane because it's not shedding off the road very well. So that's another thing that does it meet, does it not meet, that gets looked at. For the culverts, are they the right size or are they too small? And because they're too small, they're causing a lot of erosion at the outlet. Or is there no stabilization on the culvert, like on the header? And then when it rains, it just erodes the heck out of, out of the header and ends up receiving water. What about elevated outfalls on from yep. culverts? Yeah. Is that, that an too. erosional concern too? Yeah, so if there's no I like splash guard yeah. on Singleton Road. To clarify that those culverts, if it's a perennial stream and Singleton Road, if you're thinking it about is. the one, yeah. yeah. So the town's not necessarily responsible for the treatment on those on those perennial streams unless it's a, re a culvert that they regularly because a lot of them are considered state responsibility for the, the for state the will, will replace the yeah there so this is all like for non-perennial culverts really what's so, the what is that yeah, yeah we want to hear them. more about that well that's some of some of them so and and alfie you'll know like which ones i mean i think in our town there's really not many <laughs> I can't think of well, any just, that the I'm state's just really in charge of. About the state no. being what? in charge of any culverts on our road. What is a perennial they're, they're culvert? That's the first I've heard of. You just contradicted yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You both did. What's a perennial culvert? A perennial culvert is one that flows all year long, basically. Right. So, so that's something. what the permit dictates. It's just, flows. yeah, that the street so flows So what do you mean the state is in charge of perennial culverts? <laughs> they're not asking for the Doesn't treatment to happen that then that the standards have to follow on a perennial culvert. They're not asking for that. That's bad backwards. I know. Oh. But oh, I thought you meant the state was going to pay them. They made up a rule for us that doesn't apply to them. <laughs> so let me just go back into where, so the, so there's a, lot of, there's a lot of structures in the state that cross really, really large streams, like the Lamoille, the Winooski, that really the state is more in charge of those than downtown Montpelier. Or, um, what do you mean? Or like right? down up in Lamoille County, you that they they ha they actually are on. They're they have to. Fix they're them. the ones that fix them. Yeah. Yeah. But perennial culverts on Class Three roads, the state is not. Not. You're talking about yeah, highways, so, state corridors. Yeah, so we so have more state corridors. But I have to clarify this with Jim Ryan because he does. 
because Jim Ryan says that sometimes um, that you know we, this only is for non so when we're out in the field he's only asking us to look at the non perennial for the towns to meet those requirements and the standards on the non perennial the, the roads that cross the non perennial streams which are your drainage culverts and they're not necessarily your stream culverts so your stream culverts and your stream bridges you don't have to meet the standards necessarily for um, the outfall erosion or the um, or the headers or things like that because those standards I think have to be met anyway when through another program yeah right? exactly exactly yeah. so th those have to do with the road and bridge standards yeah, okay. you know what I mean I, 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 so I, that's okay. why it's not really part of the municipal general roads permit for so, erosion so so if I can but okay that, wait. that that culvert I was talking about that yeah. falls it's it's a trick it's this much this much going through there right now it's praying it never stops falling but we're kind of in a drought well tomorrow yeah. more but yeah. um so a lot of times I, I doubt I, that's a road and bridge standard culvert yeah I doubt it. It so when I'm in the, the field time. when we're out in the field we're kind of like yeah it might be perennial but if it's small enough for me if it's like a you know a 10 foot wide drainage yeah, right. it may not dry up at all right. so it may not technically be non-perennial but we're still collecting the data and making okay. sure that okay. that that information is collected and that that segment meets the standards because the state has not this, and it's also very difficult for, you know, because we send interns a lot out to, to collect this data and so do, so do other RPCs, and they're not as much trained in the hydrology that they really know what a, not, a perennial versus a non-perennial stream is. They're, you know, pretty clueless on that. So it if, it's a, two, night, if it's a big boring river, so if it's Peak and Brook, if it's Peak and Brook, if it's Duger Brook, if it's the Kingsbury, right. they're meeting the road and bridge standards, right. and don't worry about the permit for that. Okay. So that's the point of that. Okay. Does that, does that make yeah. sense? Mm -hmm. But all the little tributaries and all the little temporary drainages, and when there's a rainstorm, all the, I'm, like, I'm thinking there's one on Juger Brook that just comes off the steep hill, and there's a little waterfall there, and it spits right into Juger Brook. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that probably flows 80% of the year. Mm -hmm. Right? So when somebody's out there, you know, they'll probably think it's a perennial stream, but it, it's really small. Yeah. And so that's something, that yeah, not? that one I would include. Okay. I wouldn't include, you know, the bridge that's um, like right at the corner of Apple Hill and Duger Brook. I wouldn't include that one. I wouldn't include, you know, the big structure on 14, of course, because that's, uh, that's a state structure. Right. But I wouldn't include the one that goes over Pekin at Singleton. Right. What you do, what is included in the permit is conveyances to around those structures so for instance a conveyance and this was something that was asked that I identify what a conveyance is when we met about the draft so I have that diagram up there a conveyance zone is pretty much the end of the drainage ditch or a turnout where it's going to enter into kind of that area that could drain into the stream yeah. so um, and a lot of times you see this where these guys did a great job at the bottom of Apple Hill where the bottom of the drainage ditch comes out and then they've turned it out and then created kind of like a nice stone pool for the sediment and the water to settle before it dumps into Duke. Yeah, and, that. and that's what the state wants to see. They want to see yeah. some treatment at the end of the ditch or at a turnout and there's certainly, you know, and, and however steep that turnout is or that end of ditch conveyance zone is there's certain standards so if it's really steep they want a stone if it's kind of in between they wanted grass um, or other vegetation so did we come famous on that one yeah you did yeah. <laughs> but anyway so oh nice so yeah. the base, so that's the, the where base the, of george road there's that culvert we're doing there right base so yes Bridge or culvert, or whatever we put in there, but that there's the conveyance that goes directly in, inputs directly into the stream now. 
so we'd have to fix that. Right, which would be the berm removal off of George Road. Well, no, the end of the end of the ditch goes right into the stream right now. So we'd have right, to. Right, so you do the same treatment, yeah. stone lining and, and the yeah. sponge pool. Yeah, and I have like a nice little stone turnout. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of and these guys know what to do. A lot of it, you know, a lot they'll do a turnout a lot, and you'll see that on the roads as they're. As um, you know, they're grading. They'll, you'll see kind of like a a cut into the road. If that cut is really steep and it's near a stream, it needs to meet a certain standard. Yeah. Just so, so that so doesn't George road on this list. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. So, um, so just for convenience and for you guys to see. You know, out of these three categories, does not meet fully meets and partially meets. I just did some charts and graphs. Um, this first one is, you know, the the number of road miles for each of those categories within town, so that you can see of all of the those segments. And a segment is 100 meters long. I forgot to mention that earlier, which is about 300 feet. So, um, out of all the segments that were looked at, you've only got about seven and a half road miles that don't meet. So, um, of course- so we have seven and a half miles that don't meet. Yep. And if you look, turn it just to page uh, seven, that equals 125 segments. We're good, and good luck with Sand Hill Road, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. We have to buy land to fix that problem. Okay. Um, and then of those that don't meet, so those 125 segments, out of those, the I, you just broke it down into the var to four um, main issues that are affecting those segments that don't fully meet. So the biggest thing is the berm. Um, on the side of the road. So that's a real maintenance thing. And these guys, you know, will just know to do that and they've been doing a great job ever since we started this inventory. Just getting rid of that, that, you know, after, after they grade or during the grading, to just get rid of that little berm that's on the edge for these particular segments. Um, crowning too is another issue. Um, Road drainage is actually the lowest um, one. Only 10 segments did not meet because of the road drainage. And that's just really talking about, is it getting, does it have the proper treatment within um, the ditches or can it shed out to um, a, you know, a vegetated area before it gets to a stream? And then the other category is the conveyances that I just that mentioned. Turnout, that that size. Yeah, turns. conveyance or turnouts, yep. So that's the other category, that another issue. <laughs> so what the state does is it kind of helps prior, when it gets all this data up into this portal, it helps prioritize um, everything. And it's usually if you know a couple of things do not meet, that becomes high priority. Um, but the biggest thing is really those roads that have a really steep slope. So. Very high priority indicates an overall score of does not meet with a slope of 10% or greater. So those are really the segments that they're requiring the towns to address first. Like I mentioned in the schedule, by 2025, we want to get, um, they want to get all of those segments taken care of that are very high priority. So to help the town, um, what I did, can you go to the page eight? Um, I just did this the other day because I thought this would help you guys to just see which roads they were because in the portal it's all in, you know, these segment IDs and you have a road name, but this is going to kind of help you guys just know how many very high priority segments you have with on a particular road and then I just left the year blank and you guys can just fill that in yourselves to help you plan when mm -hmm. you're going to get it done. Yeah, this is how I pull this chart. Well, um, a lot of them are 
Yeah, so you can just I mean, you can just write done, done in that. Well, <laughs> that's right. I'm 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 that would be good to do. Yeah. yeah. Where two years later, you've already done some of yeah. these segments. We've already dealt with. Yeah, but it would be good to to know that so we can update this chart. Yep. But Pam, I heard you say earlier when you were talking about the berms that it's it at some level it's it's ongoing maintenance. You yeah, could have addressed is. it yep. at one point. Is it only perms that, berms that tends to be that? Way, and like, crown and crowning. You got to kind of just stay on yeah. top of it. Yep, to stay on top of it. That's really, you know, so, that's so, really an ongoing maintenance. So that thing. year, are, are, are we? Does that mean year completed or year to uh, yeah. to do it, perform the task? What are we looking for there in that box? I think the year that mm -hmm. these guys so intend year. to okay. complete it, which would we might be want to add another same. box year year completed. They they they're ahead, you know. No, so this is for you guys. That <laughs> oh, you, for this oh, okay. is for this you is to reporting. just, if you want to put, this is this is not what gets reported okay. to the state. Toby has his own table that he has to fill out and upload. Um, this is going to be just more for an easier way for um, <clears throat> the town to just know what's been done and what needs to be done. So, because certain segments have to be done, because the very high priority ones have to be done by 2025. So this was a way of me to show, you know, which ones are very high priority. So for instance, Duber Brook has a total of 22. Yeah. So that's a high. That's because Pam lives on it. That's because yeah. I live on it. But look, Duber Brook does not have any very high segments. Right. 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 Which is so that interesting. That means that these guys can get to Duger Brook. Whatever. When they're done with their very high priority ones. So the very high ones, there's. So I, I so have, for instance, preference there. It <laughs> says, can we, like Long Meadow Road, Long Meadow Hill Road has a three. Some yep. of them have a one, some of them have a two. That's how many segments. That's how many segments. How many that segments are very high, high priority. priority. Yeah. So Alfred, of the high, pr of the very highs. Long Meadow is done. All three? Long Meadow Road is done. When did that get done? You know what year? This year? Summer, maybe last summer. We last summer. You can just write it's all yeah. it's done. Well, yeah, this is for you. This is I for think her. it's not worth I I think, you know, making Alfie pull things out of his mind because he said yeah. online money. He said, well, at least two, maybe three. We, we don't need to, we shouldn't spend our time, but it no, would be no, good to, no, it would be, no, it this would, is just a reference for us. Right, this is just right. a reference for you guys. So you right. could go through at some point and fill it Let in. us know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which we do. I mean, Toby and I, we put that in this portal. Right. When yeah. we do this work, it's put in there and updated. Well, we don't see that. Right. But it, this would just be something. get onto the portal, and then you can see it. You can see what we, the changes that we make. We didn't know about it, so. Do we need a password to get into that portal? Um, no. no. What portal? The state DEC. DEC. Well, we can get How about I email get, you the link? Right, right. <laughs> right. That would be helpful. Thanks, Pam. What's the keep somebody from going in there and changing the data? Are the data inputted by, by the DEC staff? How does that work? The data is uploaded. The road erosion inventory data is uploaded by us. Okay. Um, so. It immediately so shows up on the website? Yeah. So there's no changes. password? So anyone could just upload it? No, I email, I email a table, it's like an Excel table, to, um, to Tim Pricer. Okay. So That's they, what we did here, uh, and he's the, he's the database right. guy at the state. Got it. The way they have it now is much different. Um, when you do an inventory with their new app, you, um, you need a password to be able to use that app. But, once you put That's it up there, it's, it's automated. It's automated when you when you are in the field, uh, or you come back from the field and you like send yeah. it there, and it's automated yeah. that way. But you need a password to be able to do it. But, um, but you know, the town can do the inventory themselves. And, and you said GAR road. <laughs> GAR road is on your list. It's a hydrologically connected one, but it didn't come up as any. Four. Yeah, it's, it's a class. class. But well, there's, there's no issues. It, it, it fully, fully meets. She said it was. No, she said it's hydrologically connected. It it's fully meets. Issues, That's so. why it's not. Oh, it fully meets. Yeah, oh, Barbara gotcha. probably fully meets. It's hydrologically connected, but it fully meets the standards because on class four roads, the only thing you have to do 
is if there's an erosion spot that's found that's more than a foot, it's, that's a foot or more, that has to be fixed in the class four road, nothing else. Right, didn't so, and that is like last year you not, did Woodbury Mountain Road, right? Yeah. Last year. And Apple Hill. Please. Right, and Apple Hill has four. Yeah. That's right. Right? But we had, we had gullies that were more than a foot. Yeah, and right. that's why. So just for um, visual fun, we made some maps of to color code um, which segments do not meet, partially meet, and fully meet. And then I just took one off, did another one without the um, fully meet segment, so you can just see um, visually which ones those are that don't meet and partially meet. And then I did a map of the very high priorities. So, um, just to give you spatial reference. I know this is a lot to take in. Oh, there's some nice um, you know, visuals in the back of crowning. <laughs> Copper crowning and some burns. And I apologize for the confusion on the state culverts and all of that. It's just you don't have to meet the standards specifically on a perennial stream because it has to meet the road and bridge standards. So, I'm just trying to take in these. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, you said that the state, this this horse sort of helps the state decide where they put grant money. Yeah, I mean, if you, so yeah, nice. so if you have a very high priority segment and you're applying, you know, say you apply for a better roads grant and you say we're gonna, you know, use this grant to fix this problem, which has been determined as a very high priority. Yeah. And you use that information to support okay. the grant application. Um, or if it was a culvert, you know, if we found a, a culvert that was too small, a lot of erosion of the outfall because of that, right. you know, a culvert replacement. Okay. Yeah. So the reason I ask is last year we were turned down for two grants. Oh, uh, were they better roads ones? Or were, uh, were they, I think they were better roads, yeah. yeah. I don't know if they looked at this and said, oh, well, Callis is ahead of the game, so let's yeah. give the money somewhere else. So, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, if to decide where they're no, going so the, so the problem is, is this is DEC, and that's VTrans, better roads. But VTrans, <laughs> they, they fight with Why each other. <laughs> yes. You are right, Phil. <laughs> what you say? Um, no, they, they work together, and they are trying um, this really, you know, VTrans does have, you know, a lot of, of play in this as well. When this was, permit was coming out, we had, you know, we're, we very, VTrans is very much involved. Um, I think VTrans recognizes that to meet the phosphorus TMDL, that towns have to fix these problems, and if the DEC is requiring them to fix these problems, that money's got to come from somewhere, and towns really need this. So I think they recognized it. If you were turned down for whatever reason, I'm not sure what that reason was. What, were they on hydrologically connected segments? Yes. Or, yeah. 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 It was uh, Marshville Road. Oh, the Marshville Road Gully, one? Gully, Washington is where it was. So the outfall the of that outfall one? Of the call, the call is that that one that's in the stormwater master plan that we uh, talked about? I believe so, yes. Yeah. yeah. Huh. No, no, not the one. I'm thinking about the one. Woods, right? No, I'm thinking of the one on Marshfield Road. Okay, next to Mark and Tegan's house. I thought right next to Mark and Tegan's house. I thought we didn't get yes. the Marshfield yeah. Road one. We that's what he's talking that's about. Yeah, that's what he's yeah. talking about. Why he didn't get it. Right. And I just didn't know if, if they're looking at this and they're saying, well, Cal's in good shape, maybe we should put our money somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, if they're looking at this report. I don't think for, so. Yeah. They're probably not drilling down that far. I don't think they're drilling down that far. Um, okay, I'm just curious. Why yeah. Get a, but get that one. Never been turned down before. For, yeah. For so if models. you've been turned down for that particular one, that one is on a. That one is on. You know. We made, well, that one's on a prior. You know, that gully is on a priority list for the stormwater master plan, and it's if I go to the DEC with. Um, wanting to get implement, you know, 
implementation money for something like that, they're going to want. They're going to want. It, they're going to say, "Well, why didn't you go to Better Roads?" And if you can, dem if you demonstrate we went to Better Roads and they wouldn't fund it, mm -hmm. right. then do you? Right. Because we, we can. Right. Like we that. can get you a copy of the denial. Yeah. 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 I'd be interested in and share that with Dan as well, and so because cool. he can kind of help you out. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, with that would be. Put it through again this year. You know, try again. Because sometimes they have money left. Run it by Dan before you try again just to see, yeah. you know, how we might be able to help yeah. booster your application. Because he does the transportation grants. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, get Dan to help you. Get Dan to help you with yeah. that one. Not yet. Wait till after October 1st. <laughs> so well, we're going to next week. <laughs> next, week. <laughs> um, <laughs> next week. And then, you know, if it really looks like he trans won't do that for whatever reason. Okay, so it's on your radar, you'll talk to Dan. Yeah. And so, Marshfield, right? so is it two culverts, or is it just that one? It was, with the it was two separate grants, two different culverts. <coughs> and they're both up yeah. walls. And, and they were both, both on denied. Marshfield Road? They were both denied. Right. But you kind of got to do it together, right? right? The project? Yeah. Was it the top and when was it the bottom? Yeah, yeah, yeah and then it's changed. Like, almost on the line property. Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking that's about. That's the one around the sharp corner. Right, yeah. right. And there's one further up in the middle of the hill. Right. Yeah. That's creating a huge, I mean, it's yeah. a huge, yeah. huge issue it's there. Really right. Right. Yeah, I'm surprised they denied it. It is a pretty Well, that's pretty sort of why I was wondering. If yeah. And they don't give a reason, they just say denied, so. It could be because uh, we've gotten money pretty right. regular. Not meeting. But it's not hydrologic being enacted, though, right? Because that's, yeah, it's not. Well, no, it's that, that particular spot. So I can see the sharp bend. I'll look into what, because I don't know why that wouldn't, I don't know why that would have come up fully made stuff that out well. Maybe people feel right. can see that, but I know, I know yeah, it was well, there. <laughs> Maybe it was the interns. Maybe it was Toby, because he did most of it, right? <laughs> All right, I'll look into that for you, Alfie. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or? No, thank you very much. There is a report. You don't need an action from us. I don't need an action from you. That is your information. Sorry. And will you be like following up with us every year to, how do we? So that's on the town to, um, you know, report to the state and mm -hmm. we'll stay on their schedule and, but I will send you that link, so. Okay. You know, if you want to check yeah. on the progress that these guys are making, you can see it directly there. Um, but we can ask Toby and stuff for yeah. an annual update of what's done, what's mm -hmm. going to be done right. maybe next year. And then, you know, periodically the state's going to ask for, you know, an updated inventory, which I think is going to be about every five years or something. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Some of these. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we'll, we'll be there to assist. Target. Right. Yeah, you know, exactly. It's in one side of town, the other side is. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and then well, sometimes the work that you've done might have to be repeated, like yeah. the berms and the crowns. Right. And, right. and I think that's, you know, as we move into the future with this, I mean, this is not, I mean, even when they get to 2037, <laughs> that's not going to be the end all. You know, they're going to want inventories to continue and just make sure that things, mm. you know, because. You know, God forbid we got an Irene or something. Right, we washed right. a lot of this stuff out. We just did. You know, so just tonight. So that yeah. you know, it's it's not gonna be you know, it's a plan and it's a way to implement the standards that are being required. Yeah, Pam, when we go on the state portal, you're gonna send us. Mm -hmm. or is it? Does it look sort of like this, or is it more? No, it's just really a table. You didn't bring a copy of it, did you? I should have. Um, it's really a table. Like, like this. Um, but what it says is, it'll. It says the priorities for. I don't have it with me. I can maybe type in. Make it on. Well, I don't know if we want it. We don't need. No, no, no. What I'm curious about yeah, is whether it, whether we're going to be able to readily, you know, kind of match them up. Yeah, track the progress. Yeah. Track our progress. On, or is it if it's onesie twosie like the wastewater database? You know, I, I have no, no idea. No, it's not that bad. It's okay. not as, as bad as it, it does look a little different from this. The priority is in a column, so you'll see a particular road segment, 
um, listed and it'll give you, a, um, it'll show you the column of what the priority is. It'll show whether something, whether the segment does not meet, fully meets, or partially meets. And then it'll also show, you know, what caused those scores. So for right. instance, it'll show, you know, the crown doesn't meet with a D um, or an F for fully or a P. So it's a lot more detailed than this and I didn't want to, yeah. like, yeah. it's a lot to look at. So yeah. I didn't want to bring that to you as your planning table. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, what I'm more, I, what I think we should be more interested in rather than just, you know, line by line, it's just kind of an overall sense that, okay, and maybe this is something we ask Alfred to give us. We had 26 very high priorities. I mean, who cares where they are? How many are done? Of 64 high priorities, how many are done? So we can just track even at that macro level. Well, I think the, what's the progress? I think the, the biggest thing is what are the high priority ones that need to get done? first in the shuffle, and those are the ones that you're already working on. Right. Well, like I said earlier, this this report is two years ago, mm -hmm. yeah. so we've done a lot of this work already. Talking. Right. And so if, it was, if this was recalibrated, we're going to have a lot less that doesn't meet. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested in, work. in how many. So of the 26. How many are done? Of the 64. So, so Toby says, would know that? Toby should be able to get that yes. from that table. Get that or from, from us updating okay. it or pull that out of my head. Can you connect <coughs> that? <to> that? <coughs> ah. Which I think, uh, clearly Toby is not speaking today. Right? Cool. So, well, You're still working on this, right? It's still the season we're working on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be a continual work in progress, I think? So the problem with this, it, there's no like, there's no column here on the portal for done and not done. So that you guys report, you have your own table that you have to submit, right? right. Maybe I think maybe the thing to do is to get Toby to come in with this table that he does stuff on and show us how it works. So this is the priority, and these are the like various things that are wrong with it, and the status of whether it meets or it doesn't meet. Yeah. Um, whether it's a class four road or a gravel road or paved the road name, um, but there's not there's not um, a, there's not a column that's you know done. Yeah. There's not a We're done. You know, because that's. That's another right. table that that's they submit. That's the whole idea of the, the, the coming and taking to do another inventory. Yeah, right. Five years, they'll look at it again. So that's why, that's why Dan suggested I give this to you, because it'll mm -hmm. give you a little bit. If you want, I could just even, you know. Can you just email that just table? Email, email you the word document the table. For this, you know, that has the table in it. That, that would be helpful, I think. Yeah, yeah and then Toby could keep it quick, on the. Quick, yeah. quick look. Right. I mean, I feel I think that's all we're after. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because our our job is to just you know applaud the progress, <laughs> even if it's once a year that we see these numbers go down. Right, when but we won't know that if we don't have something to, to look at. Yeah, right. So, Makes sense. thank you, Pam. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else on this offer that you want to ask? Or? Uh, no, no, I'm good on it. Okay. Do so we have a Toby coming up? Hmm? Do we have a Toby check in coming up? We will. So yeah. maybe we can specifically put this on the. Yeah, Katie can put it on my to do list that we want to hear from Toby about this. All right, we skipped over. The ROW application for Tammy Beauregard on Martin Road. And I looked on our website for the form that we signed off on, but the form is not there. Hmm? Bill Pelton. Yes, I'm a <laughs> It's Bill Pelton. 
the guy that owns the property. Oh, at the end oh, of the we both thought of it. Yeah, we both thought of it. No, I was doing a bunch of looking around. Oh, and I was oh, thinking of that. I remember it was P-E-L, Pell. Pell what? Pell key? Okay. Pell key. Pell key. Pell key. Pell key. Hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so, Alfred, do you want to talk to us about this right away? Uh, she just, she feels the need to put a culvert at the end of her driveway. Good night. Good night, Scott. Bye-bye. Good night. See ya. Thank you. So I just told her the, the, the most thing that she'd have to do is get a right-of-way permit because mm -hmm. she's working in our right-of-way. Mm -hmm. um, and you, it so says I here, it's 18-inch diameter, 20 feet long? Yep. Not 15-inch? Her driveway call with the standard is 15 inch diameter, 20 feet long. She's saying 18 in her. If she wants She's to go to go larger, that's fine. It's okay, okay. Yeah. <coughs> but it's only, but it only requires a 15 inch. Right. 18 inch is the standard size. Of, she's not making a mistake there. They actually make 18, 18 inch culverts. is the standard for, for roads. No, they, okay, so they have 18 inch culverts out there. They, oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what we use for that's our standard for our roads. Oh. <laughs> because I can let her know that okay. 15 is the standard for our driveway standard driveway call. Because I can let her know that because it's probably less it's expensive to get for her for sure. Yeah. So it's the 15 inch culvert is the standard for driveways. For driveways. Okay. She doesn't have one now. Is that the deal? Uh, she's got one, but it's further up the driveway. Oh. It's like and it's way out of our right away. It's not. Mm -hmm. But she is in conflict with her neighbor, <laughs> so oh. which I am staying away from. Mm -hmm. uh, Please do because it's water that's coming off of coming crossing her driveway and dumping onto his. Mm -hmm. He's got a problem with it. Um, so she told me that she was going to move the culvert to try to appease him. And I said, "You don't want to move that culvert. It, it, it needs to be there." Mm -hmm. So then she said, well, I'm just going to add one at the bottom of, it, of my driveway then. I'm like, okay, well, if you want to do that, that's fine, but you just got to have a right-of-way permit. Because uh -huh. now you're working in our right-of-way. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that going to solve the problem she's having? No, because her problem is with her neighbor. No, but it's is it going to solve the water problem? It's going to solve yeah. what she thinks is a water problem, yes. Okay. That's all we need to know. Yes. Yes. Look at that. So I, think, I think we approve it and... I'll let her do the work and I'll go back and look at it uh, and make sure it's not okay. the standard. Well, we're not going to be able to sign anything. We can approve it, but until I can get the form from the town office. Well, that isn't the form that you speak of is after the work is done. It's well, we have to, no, but we have to, off. usually we have something like on a curb cut permit where we say what we agree to and then the board signs it, but there's nothing oh. with this. Oh. So. I'll have to do some more work on that and then get the board to sign it after, but we can go ahead and approve it tonight. There's also, yeah. um, Cliff, if you can scroll down, there was a, um, oh, hang on, go back. There was a spot where there was a check, some check fields that weren't completed. Has Working the project on. been clearly marked, staked, and flagged at this site? Yes or no? Where are you, Sharon? Right. Oh, right there. Yeah. So. I Has feel, it been? Uh, yeah, I feel like we need to have that answered so we know. You mean before we approve it? Well, uh, it's it. an existing it's driveway. It's an existing, existing driveway. driveway. It's yeah. not a new curb cut. It's a right away permit, not so much. Where is this in relation to the Champagne property? Uh, I don't know anybody named Champagne. Yeah, Champagne, the farm there that Fairmont puts corn on. Is that it's way up. It's close. It's the very first driveway as you leave County Road onto Martin Road. Okay. It's on the right hand, right hand side. I know where that is. Yeah. Martin. It's a new drive. It's a new establishment. Oh, Martin. Five years or so. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not. It's a double wide. Yeah. And that's Tam. Tam. Okay, I know exactly where that is now. She's yeah. asking one hundred and seventy thousand dollars to solve the damn thing. So. What? <laughs> that's it. that's yeah. not for now, Jim. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, so not to be a stickler, but. Too under, late. Uh, yeah, I know. 
Underneath it says the proposed right of way site must be flagged before the application will be considered. That's what it says. Has the project been clearly marked, staked, and flagged? This is a right of way application, not a right. Isn't that what it is at the yeah, top? Yeah, right of way. So is that question relevant to this application? Or well, should it come on? Has it been marked? Ordinarily, yes, but scenes of conversation that I had with her, I know the area. It's a driveway. It's an existing no driveway. driveway. If so, it was if it was something that they were going to like put a building on park yeah. in our right away or or okay. some sort of a structure, okay. then I would say yes, it needs to be marked so that everybody can look at it. Right. But really it's only a culvert going in. Okay. And so a lot of times I'll do this today. work myself, but well, I don't feel like it's necessary. So I'm, and she's already gonna do some work right. there anyways. So I just said you gotta get a permit and okay. and you can do it. So it's yeah, that's not, great. It's not going to affect our road. So so the answer is no. So the answer is NA or no until but Toby's per, or Alfie, sorry is perfectly yeah. comfortable. But yeah, the you answer, can put my name on there if you want. I mean, I, well, the answer is no, but I think right. The reason is because it doesn't apply. It's because Alfred knows the area and he's comfortable with what yeah, she's proposing. I, I think it's be, not that not what I heard is the reason. I heard the reason was. That it's already existing. It is an existing driveway. Right. But there's no existing culvert. True. Okay, so. So can you just put, like. So what's your point, Sharon? Sure. But not applicable. I just don't want us to start slipping on the expectations. To, I, would, I would say no, right. um, but no for the minutes that. Alfred has met with the landowner. He's perfectly comfortable. He understands right. the project scope, mm -hmm. um, and he doesn't feel in this particular instance it's necessary to have stakes and flags. Right. Okay. Right. No, good. but not necessary. Right. In this instance, no, but because in right. 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 it's so still it's applies. Next, though. Yes. Right. And the right. Next Just not necessary. Yes. It's still, it's still there. It, it, that's exactly what. I, that's exactly my point. Yeah. Is that we be marked out. Been if, really clear about mm -hmm. why we're making an exception. If I haven't gone and looked at it, and I hadn't gone and you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. right. But you, you, you did a site visit, I think we can say in the minutes, that you visited the site mm -hmm. and clearly know the designated spot where the culvert will be installed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, if we can get a motion for all of that in a second, and I'll have to track down the form, which I know there is one, but I couldn't find it on the website. Can the motion include the authorized you to sign on behalf of the work? I suppose right. it could, but yeah. we, yeah. yeah, I mean, we don't normally do that either, but since we're making exceptions tonight, mm -hmm. we could do that. We've done stuff like this before. Okay, you sign, like, like checks. Yeah. If the board is on board with it. If the board's on board. Yeah. All right, do you want to add that to the motion? And who made the motion, John? Uh, I think Cliff just did. I okay. made the motion, sure. All right, is there a second? Second. Okay, for the discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. All right. And I think you don't have to stay anymore. I I want to hear good. about all the other stuff. No, I'm good. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Thank night. you. Good night. Thanks, Sophie. Hopefully, it didn't wash out any um, roads with the rain. Right. It rained pretty hard, but. Yeah. I worry more about trees and whatnot. Yeah, well, we haven't heard the phone ring, so. Right. Is it? Yeah. Well, you know what? We were in for some rain. Oh, boy. How long is this going to take? Um, the late homestead declarations. Everybody, somehow or another, has to file this form with their taxes. And sometimes if you have an accountant do it, they do it for you. Otherwise, you're supposed to do it every year. And if you don't do it every year, then the state charges you extra money. And if, you're, if you don't file it and you file it late, then you're supposed to have a penalty callous. And I've gone around and around asking questions of the town office staff and getting information. Callous has not charged a penalty we for did. folks that have late filing fees. We did. We when? did about two years ago. But we stopped doing that. We, we stopped doing it because we kept going and had abatement meetings all the time. 
to, right. to yeah, rectify right. whatever it was because the tax accountant didn't do their job, blah, 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 right. blah. And then we went through the abatement and then whatever it was, and it became like, was it worth it? Right. That's right, because we did do abatements for those. I remember that now. Yeah. Um, you know, I couldn't, we couldn't find anything in our minutes because they were probably in the abatement mm -hmm. minutes. minutes. Um, decided that we aren't going to charge a fee because what it did is it caused a lot of extra paperwork for the town office staff, the BOA or the BCA, um, to keep abating these. Mm -hmm. But apparently, and it was brought up to Judy and Sandra through a training and through MuniNet, the listserv that they all have, that the select board is supposed to annually decide that it's not going to charge the late the late filing homestead penalty. And we haven't done it for at least a couple of years ever since we did those abatements, and I think you're supposed to do it by June. So they asked us if we would, just for the record, say that we're not gonna charge this late homestead declaration penalty, and then we're gonna have to remember to do it every year. And there's a statute, um, Taxation and Finance, Declaration of Homestead. And I don't know, is that in the? It's, it's probably the references. And I don't know if it's in here, it is 32-540-10-G. It sounds like, from what you're saying though, we're already doing this. We're already doing practice. it. Right, so we just have to go back and officially put it in the minutes and then remember to do it Probably like at the beginning of the fiscal year or something like that would be the easiest right. way to remember to do it. So I make the motion that we um, endorse our practice of waiving the late fee for filing a late homestead declaration. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. All right. Now. And we're probably not going to get through this item because I would like John to come back in for this discussion. Yes. Well, well, no, we, had, we got through one thing, but I want, I want you to be here for this discussion. This is the Town Hall Town Office Reserve Fund. Oh, I'm not interested. Um, remember at our last select board meeting, we had a discussion about this, and how, bye. Good night. See you, Jan. Good night. How we use money, was it last meeting? Or meeting? It was probably last meeting, I, just, mm -hmm. I saw emails it about it, but I don't yeah. have a card with um, You can watch the video. Yeah, it's, it's just get your coffee, according to John. I'll just get caught up right now. Oh, right. Go. <laughs> you don't want to watch the video? <laughs> oh, but there's so much fun in it. Mm. Um, we had this discussion raised about the use of the town hall, town office reserve funds for, and the minutes from town meetings say repair and maintenance. That's what the voters approve. Right. Um, we used and authorized the use of the town hall reserve funds for renovation. And it came up in the context of using those funds for renovations here in the town office. In my mind, I guess I really didn't think repairs and maintenance, I guess it's different than renovation. To me, this maybe could be considered repairs and maintenance once done here. Clearly over there, it's repairs and maintenance and maintenance that have been put off for mm -hmm. 75 years or something right. like that. But it's called renovation. We didn't call it Town Hall Repair and Maintenance Committee. We called it Town Hall Renovation Committee. So I don't know how deep in the weeds we want to go with this. We could put something on the warning um, for next town meeting to clarify that use. Um, Jim Barlow responded. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <clears throat> On its face, reconfiguration of the town office interior would not, in the ordinary use of the words, be considered repairs or maintenance. Um, 
I don't know that the voters really thought about like renovation or reconfiguring the inside of the town office. So I guess the discussion we need to have is, do we think that it meets the voter intent back in 2014 with these articles? Or do we want to put something on the warning to clarify it for next town meeting and saying that it was okay for us to use the town hall, town office reserve funds for reconfiguration, renovation. Where are we on the roof? Well, that's going to come up. Where's the money in there probably to do both? Well, right. I, I'm not, I'm not, that's another question is whether we can do both, but. Because um, this year we're not going to get, John's been giving us regular updates with Andy. Um, this year, it looks like we're just going to do some kind of a fix because we haven't been able to get a contractor because of, there's two issues. There's the roof, and then there's what are you going to find under the roof that's rotted and needs to be fixed? That's right. repairs right. and maintenance. Right. Um, so, you know, we can kind of, like, take this down to the inertia, you know. How much money is in that fund? Oh, I don't remember from last time the discussion. Is that in the minutes? Was it the 99, September 9th minutes, I think? It might have been. Yeah, I, I think it would be, yeah. I might have. I looked at them earlier, but I don't remember. Um, but I, I guess the question is, is did are we meeting the voter intent with the use of these funds? Is the, I, In my mind, is, is the bigger question. Clearly, the roof is maintenance. Um, because leaks, but. And, and I think where I'm coming from, Denise, is to, I agree with Jim and I agree with you. And so that's kind of the priority that emerges in my mind is the language on its face says repairs and maintenance. Mm -hmm. And the roof is clearly repairs and maintenance mm -hmm. and the building is gonna crumble around if we don't do that. The last thing we want to try to defend our decision to use repair and maintenance money to do reconfiguration um, when we can't afford to do the roof. <laughs> and, and that, right. no, the roof's gotta come first. And that's what I'm saying. Right. Is, as long as there's money to do um, both. You know, it might be here. I think there is, there is money to do both depending on what Steeplechase comes back with for a design. And it might be that the design cannot be implemented fully, you know, maybe it'll have to be over the course of a few years with the roof coming first. The, the, the discussion happened in the 26th, the August 26th meeting where Sandra updated us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head. I know there's money in there. Well, it was $10,807 that's currently in there. And do you remember she was saying that, I there was um, that. the Town Hall Reserve Fund had 10,000. Oh, sorry. And it's not, there's not an exact amount in the September 9th. Mm -hmm. um, it's a town office and town hall reserve. No, we broke, broke, no, we, we broke article 23. No, it's article 23 and 24 in 2014. Right. But I'm saying. And we split them out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Back then, and they have a No, I think we split them out just recently. Okay, so I'm looking at the 2014, the 20, Article 23 was to see if the town will establish a town office and town hall reserve fund for repairs right. and maintenance of these town buildings. And Article 24 was to see if the town will appropriate some of 20,000 right. to be deposited in the same fund. Right, and I don't remember which minutes, which meeting it was, but we decided as a board to take what was in the fund, split it in half, in each mm. fund, okay. yeah. so that one fund, like the town office fund, didn't get succumbed right. by the right. town hall. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fund. Right. Yeah. So to That's make it fair, girls might have the right resource. Um, you know, this is the this is the budget update. This should tell us. This looks like when it was together, sixty four thousand three nineteen. Yeah, I thought she said 60 something, Sandra. But I thought, no, but we took that amount though and split it. Mm -hmm. But that, and that amount was before the recent appropriation. 
You know what I mean? Because that from that's from town meeting last year, and since then there would have been the appropriation from 2018, the beginning of fiscal year, and then fiscal year July 19. So town office fund. I just grabbed this. What page stack. are you? Back. I'm on. No, I don't know what page I'm on. Um, it's it's the general ledger. It looks like this. So what is this? This okay. is for everybody? Yeah. Well, it's sitting there. <laughs> that's, that's on our list. <laughs> All right. Oh, this? So on the town, here, John, I'll share with you. Town of Council. Oh, John, um, Jeff has got it called up. All right. So the town office fund looks like $60,000. Yeah. Right. Is that the one we're talking yeah. about? We're talking about the town office yes. fund. Yeah. Not, not all, all, but office. Right. So, so is 60, that the Yeah, $60,000. Town office. Right. Okay. 59900 so, right. according to the piece of paper we have here. Yep. Yeah. So that's right. So $60,000. We don't have, we don't think we have a $60,000 roof problem. No. Yeah, that, that's my concern is yeah. that, that we don't spend all our money mm -hmm. moving. Right. Well, and when we talked to Steeplechase last time, I remember bringing up the roof issue. Do you remember what he said, John? The roof thing? I remember bringing it up to him that we have this issue because we haven't been able well, to find... Well, you said we well, work on it, and he said, well, we don't really do roofs. We do, like... He did, the, but they do repairs, like, underneath, right? He said he didn't really, they didn't really do that kind of work. How are we going to get a straight answer from Andy to get this done? Well, you're going to see him tomorrow. Okay. He'll be there. Or meeting over there. Or meeting over there. Town hall. Really? In the fancy building? Yeah. Might as well do a site meeting over there. there. Okay. And that's the only time John and Donna were good. Available, so. Good. Um, Will the camera be there tomorrow? I don't know. Is no, the camera. No. I have okay. another assignment. Oh, okay. Um, so, so like anyway, the camera, could you download it? Yeah. If you want it, I can. Yeah, if you want to. Uh, here. Okay, okay. You're not going to get a video on it? Yeah. No. 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 I can video it for you. Mm -hmm. If you want to. I don't know if people want to watch it while they're drinking their coffee or not. Yeah. They'll increase coffee sales to the other co op. That'd be good. <coughs> I like the really Economic. Economic. So, boost. anyways, I guess my, my question is how, I when I look at this, I think we're meeting voter intent. I really do. What, renovating? Mm -hmm. We're using the money for reconfiguring. We're using it for the building. Renovating. Right. I mean, we're using we're it for the We're not swiping the building. money. Mm -hmm. right? We're not having a picnic with it. Right. You know. I, I don't disagree. As long as there's money to fix the roof, which right. really right. is. Clearer. Yeah. It's just, right. That's the first priority here. Yeah. Right. That's right. Obviously. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, we're good. And there'll be an addition to the fund this town meeting anyway. The roof's not getting right. taken care of until. Right. It's next. 10. And you know, we, it's 20,000 we've been asking for, 10 for 10 and 10. And I'm really glad that we did that years ago, thinking ahead. I think it was, and do we, we did, did good. Do we do it each year? Do we vote a little more in each year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I don't have a problem with, it's, do you, it's an important issue. Right. And do others agree? I don't know. I'm still kind of torn because I think we asked Jim for his legal opinion and yeah. I actually printed out what he said. And you know Donna raised the question, um, and then we asked Jim, and he kind of said, "You're really kind of." And so after I read this, I was like, "All right, we're going to have a special meeting, and then that's that." So <clears throat> I mean, I can see just like what Sharon said. I mean, I could see both ways, but when you take it for its words on its face. It's not really repairs and maintenance, but yes, it's something like John just said. We're not putting it on something else. And yes, it's really a very, we've established that this really needs to happen. So, so I'm kind of torn. Well, I mean, what we could do is, you know, if we want to say, let's, we want to put the same amount or we wanted to increase the amount that goes into these reserve funds, um, we could, put it on the warning again, and include renovation. You know, to me it's about, you know, we have, I agree with 
Yeah. I, mean, we, I don't think anyone here disagrees. I'm, no, I'm yeah. speaking for everyone yeah. with Jim's interpretation. Because he's looking at and, it purely. And, and, and he's trying to keep us, right. you know, right. on, on the on straight and narrow road. road. Right. Yeah. Um, but this is about the functioning of our government. Mm -hmm. This is about we have a really good staff, and I would not want anything to happen where they were so uncomfortable working here that they went away and mm -hmm. went somewhere else that was more pleasant. So I. You know, I don't think it's it's reckless. I think it's, this is about making our office more efficient. So, well, I, so and I, so, I, and I think that you know, Jim is looking out for us. This is clearly what was said in the article. Right. But I think the intent, in my mind, was for whatever right. these buildings needed to keep them up and running. So, so right. And that's voter intent, right? And so, Jim is. I how I read Jim's email is. You know, wouldn't it be nice if Jim said, oh, there's four cases out there that decided that repair and maintenance absolutely includes what you're talking about. And all he's saying is there's not. It, there's, there's not those cases. And so Jim, even though he's a lawyer, is looking at the language and telling us it means what it, it, means what it says. And right. to me, that, it's, not a, it's not a legal opinion that we're in trouble if we interpret it. It's more like right. there's not something grand that he can offer us that protects us, but we're kind of stuck with our own excellent judgment mm -hmm. right. to make a decision about what's the best course for the town given what we know and, and understand about our needs, the language, and our townsfolk. Right, and I think, like I said, I Very think well that, said. Um, you know, the voter intent, in my understanding, is until somebody raised it, I didn't even really think that it was an issue. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, uh, so for me, um, to me, the, the the lesser issue is this. The for me, it's one voting member. Um, the greater issue is there was a lot of time, effort expended to make this actually a beautiful office. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, I, and I don't even mind the paint color. I think it's beautiful. I like. Time so I come in here, I'm like. Wow, this is nice. And I look around and I'm like, maybe I could borrow that idea from my house someday. Um, it's really nice. It's laid out really well from a aesthetic mm -hmm. standpoint. Right. I also worked at the state and saw what they did to beautiful buildings in moldings when they hacked in walls and uh, destroyed beautiful spaces. And I, I just want to say this is a conversation on the road. But I'm going to be really pushing to make sure this isn't something that just gets slapped together. Because in my estimation, um, yeah, in my, it's my opinion that that office, that building over there, could be used, fitted up right for an office. Oh, as if this, when I put this out in the email, if this, if there was an L put on this building, we would send people down the L to work there. But for some reason, because we have a road in between us. Is that it's a physical impossibility to move a file there. Everything's a physical impossibility, and I don't see it as that. I see that if we put the right procedures in place, that we could utilize that. We have a clerk, we have an assistant clerk, we have plenty of staff, um, and I think there are ways to accommodate yeah. be done. Not to go down that road too far. Right, we don't want to go down. But, but I think you know a lot of this could be resolved by internet connection. Uh, phones that ring in both places at the same time, and um, a, safe, a small safe to store things right. in, in a room and right. sign outs. So, yeah, and I, and so. I appreciate what you're saying. I think we need to hear. That's another from, discussion. Right, I think we need to hear from the staff at a later date yeah. their thoughts and concerns right. with right. that approach. Right. Um, but anyway, so that's not the discussion yeah. we're having tonight. Right. But I don't want to see us <clears throat> fit up this and spend crazy money when there's just going to be a resource over there we can right, spend no. half a million dollars on that, that could mm -hmm. could provide equal or better. Right. I don't think we're going to know a lot until Steeplechase so. right. comes we don't. back to it. Right. So. Mm -hmm. And then we can go down that road yeah. and, we're yeah. Not, yeah. and we'll have to. Right now we're talking about the reserve funds. Yep. Mm -hmm. So is every, are you, yeah, that, are you okay yeah. now? I mean, I think the lawyer's job is to give us the plain meaning of what we said. And, yeah, no, and I like both of what Sharon yeah. and John said. and. I'm gonna, Clarification. I do want to pile on and express a concern along the lines of what John said. My, my, what I don't want to see us do Can we? is do this every 10 years. 
the, I, if I'm going to support it, but I want it, but can the building's we, only 10 years old. No, but can we do this first and then if we want to have the discussion? Do we want, so what do you want is to this, vote on this? I just want to know if there's board consensus that the way we're handling the reserve fund right now is what we will, right, is what we think and what we agree that the intent of those funds was for. I think we, um, we, we should I'm document it in the minutes. With using, I'm going to say I'm comfortable with using mm -hmm. the fund for the reasons. So that we have been using. Well, and, and to fit up the office to make our mm -hmm. government right. Right. We may, and, function. You know, we may uh, not uh, agree with whatever totally comes back from them, and then we have that. Yeah, well. And we'll, then we have that negotiation. Right, right, that's right. But right now, we've been using it and anticipating using the town office fund for some reconfiguration and mm -hmm. roof repair. Roof repair. That's right. mm -hmm. We've been using the hall fund to help with the renovation. To me, that's renovate, uh, much more renovation than right. the roof. Mm -hmm. I think my, I, I, hear, I hear what you're saying, and I, and I agree. What I want to package with my agreement is the building isn't that old, right. and uh, we shouldn't be doing a reconfiguration every, every 10 years. And, and as office staff changes, we don't want to be reconfiguring based, right. on, based on personality, and personal and preferences. Right. right. I um, want to make sure that we don't do that. That's exactly what I want to have be saying. Right, even as we say we're okay with it, mm -hmm. the staff is growing. Yes, but the town clerk's going to change every ten years. We're not going to renovate every right. ten years. No, we can't. We can't. So, so I want to be. I think you hinted at something, and you did mention earlier that we decided as a board to split the fund 50-50. Mm -hmm. That's not a hard line. That's a policy. And right. if if we need tomorrow to borrow everything in that fund. For this office to work over there to get that thing up and running, I think that's 100% appropriate. In anticipation of going to the town meeting, mm -hmm. and we would ask for the money we need because the scheduling would be different for this office. Understanding this office would be a spring summer project. Right, because this Article 24 says $20,000 into the town office and town hall reserve fund. Right. They were they were right. one. They're, they are one. They were one. But we, we are we are managing them. Right. In our accounting right. practices, That's we right. are managing them as right. separate But they amounts. are one, and this money can move back and forth. As needed. And likewise, down the road, if they, their project's going to be delayed for a year, and it's, we can borrow and put it over here and get something done. I mean, it's within our authority as the board to, to be able to do this. Right. That's what the and, and that's and that's what this is really all about. Right. Yeah. And like John said, we're not squandering it. We're not. No. I, and I think you know. I mean, something I think it's else. easy enough to justify how we used it and why. You yeah. want to ask Cliff how he feels I'm about it? How Cliff feels. <laughs> um, yes. On the surface, I absolutely understand the point that Jim makes in his email here. I think. We all are in agreement and would all acknowledge that what would drive um, a renovation, be it every 10 years, be it once in 20 years or every five years, it's the needs of the town. That's what would drive it. Um, the space, as it was designed and built, worked for the needs of the town at that point in time. It was one person. But now, things have changed and we can't get by with just one person. So we have to address the needs of the town, and that's why we agreed to do this. Um, and I think if you ask the voters, you know, okay, you supported this in creating this fund, um, I don't think anyone did, would disagree with, yeah, we want the town to be able to function and do the things that the town needs to do mm -hmm. so that we can continue to exist. Um, and the voters did support the charter, which evolved into, with the understanding we were going to hire a treasurer. Great. Right. Exactly. You need to put your staff somewhere. Yes. Right. Right. And yeah, I mean, it's a whole big picture kind of thing. The interconnectedness of the universe. However, uh, that being said, I don't think 
it is ill-advised to look at the possibility of updating this language at some future point mm -hmm. so that it's clear, so that there is no questions, and that the town has that opportunity to say, yes, this is what we intended to yeah. accomplish. Have we had that on every... It's, I was just looking at that, what you're... Gonna, and this is last year's warning. Yeah, so it is... We, the one from this March. Yeah, it actually, now I've lost it again. Town, it says town office reserve fund. That's all, that's all the language is. Yeah, it's right, it's in the budget now instead of as an article. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that, yeah, and then, right. the, and then so we, they're approved as Because you established it okay. with the articles and then you put it into the budget. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, if we wanted to say, you know, maybe we need to be thinking we need to put a little more money in for future maintenance, mm -hmm. you know, you can clarify it then as well by saying repairs, maintenance, renovation. Yeah. So that you cover all the bases. I think even if we had talked about renovation, frankly, I mean, I wasn't around the board at the time, but, you know, I, I think... Yeah, I, I, I just, don't think we would have gone that deep to say maintenance doesn't include renovation, taking cabinets out and right. moving things around. Right. 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 I mean, to me, that all goes together. When you renovate your kitchen, that's you're maintaining your house. You right. Some right. Squeaky spots and keep the mice out, and it's all. And if we didn't do something to renovate the town hall, you know, eventually it's going to fall in because the foundation was so bad. And, you know, like I said, I, I agree. I don't think we need to, we need to look at the big picture. How does our town yeah. government function? It is more employees. When this was built, it was one person. Mm -hmm. And it worked because you, know, you could have privacy. Now there's no privacy. Yeah, that for one it. person performed both functions. Well, treasury. Right. And that one, you know, there's no place to have HR discussions or if somebody's upset about something and delinquent taxpayers, there's no place to take them to like, mm -hmm. Some board down. members used to meet in houses. Right, I remember. Those discussions. Right, I remember eating, meeting at Eva's kitchen table. Cliff had the right language. I think we might even, you know, we're, we'll have a placeholder right to have it revisit this conversation. But it's it's really, or or you know, other other whatever's to. Well, like for instance, we're having to upgrade. To for instance, we're having to upgrade IT wiring as part of this project. That's not maintenance. I'd like no, to draw not. everyone's attention to what's on the screen. Oh, run oh, eight. Restore something old, especially mm -hmm. a building, to a good state of repair. Thank you. It's really reconfigured. It's, it's fresh. It's, it's the reconfiguration. Yeah. Right. I, we've spent too much time. Yeah, I was going to say, if you want to revamp, re move on, I mean, would the board feel more comfortable if we actually had a motion? Or is this discussion and the documentation in the minutes good enough for everybody? No, but give me my email there. I don't, yeah. I, I, you're good? I'm good. Okay. Yeah. I think we've All right, let's not kick the do horse it to death here. Good. That's good to me. All right. Well, we Moving on. Um, all right, so I still haven't scheduled this meeting about stray animals and stuff, but I will. It's on my list. Um, I've had other things coming up. Um, all right, IT update. No update other than I'd still like to have us get it on the schedule to make a decision as to whether we still want to move forward with talking to people or if we just want to make that decision based upon what we have. Okay. And I don't remember where we left off. I think we left off on we wanting were, to have people we, come in. We, we, where we left off was we were looking at um, we had that whole big having a discussion thing. about where we are right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking to have a special meeting possibly as early as today, uh, meeting at six. But mm -hmm. other things came up, and so that didn't happen. Um, Do you want to schedule a special meeting at the beginning of our October meeting to? Have this discussion. Decide what I don't know that we, we need to have do. a special meeting if we just want to put a block of time in a section of regular meeting. I'm fine with that. Okay. To do what? To decide where we want to go from here. Do we want to oh. still have people come in? Do we want to make, make a decision based on the information that we already have? I mean, it's going to be October. We're paying 
our V tech more per month now than we would if we had chosen them as our contracted first people. But we had concerns about RV Tech based on right. issues that came up. We went through all this ROP process, this chart that Cliff came up with, and then we got stalled out trying to get, you know, decide whether we want people to come in <coughs> and when. What's no, the board's pleasure? And it became problematic as we moved into the summer months and whatnot. And of course, we were all involved in different things. So, um, that's what I would recommend uh, would be that we just block out some time on a regular meeting mm -hmm. and have that discussion. And if anybody wants me to resend some of those documents that I created and did presentations they, on, they're, they're all in there. Are they in a separate folder marked? Um, I believe they are all in. I did create a separate folder. But they're in a, yeah, you have a special IT folder, that's right. It's but I'm not there. sure if they're all in there. It's in the shared. In this yeah. one. I, I'll have to double check and make sure I've got everything. Yeah, I think if everything is just in there. RFP IT service yeah. proposals. What's, what and are, we have our little chart. That yeah, the analysis did. I think was in the other that's, folder. That's the one I'm not yeah. sure. So maybe you could just move I'll just that double check and there. make sure everything's in here. And then we'll schedule like a half an hour Mm -hmm. Time on a upcoming agenda to talk about it. Yeah, here it is. The SWOT analysis. Does that have every, all of our combined scoring too, though? Or just but okay, I mean, if you could put all three of those documents in that same folder, then it'll all be together. Okay. That would be great. Yeah, I'll go through and make sure okay. that everything we did is in here. I'm, I'm thinking there's one document that's missing. Okay. All right. Perfect. Remind me to. Another item that I'm confused on, when I was looking for something on the town website, I saw this emergency reserve fund balance policy, and I read it, and I read it again, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm not, I'm trying to remember, if Scott was on, no, Scott wasn't on the board then, but I think he's the one who suggested that we do this. I'm not sure <coughs> what the intent was because we have reserve highway reserve fund, we have town hall, town office reserve funds already. So I just want to put this on our radar. Are we going to talk about it another time? Yeah, I just want to put this on everybody's radar. This is why, like, sometimes I do this to get it on people's radar so that it doesn't, we don't come up with it, you know, suddenly at a select board meeting, you're like, what the heck is this? It's started. not in tonight's folder, though, right? Um, I went through the folder. No. This I don't think so. It's on the website. Can, can you put it in the folder? Mm -hmm. Not for tonight, but for whenever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next meeting. We're well, talk about it. Go right in there. Yeah, if we if we do at that meeting, because then otherwise you got to keep moving stuff different folders. But anyways, I just wanted to put it on your radar and get people to look at it, mm. and maybe you understand it better than I will. Um, the auditor. I signed it. Yeah, I know. So it's February moved. 2018. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm like, I wonder what we meant by this for sure. So I just want to review it because yeah. I'm not exactly right. sure. Yep. Um, auditors, they're gonna, from my conversation with Sandra, they're gonna come on the 14th. So that's gonna take a big chunk of time to review the audit that they just did. Um, so we might not, we might be able to do that. And I thought it was a good time that same night. To review, that's green again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To review um, Sandra's most recent report to the board, which is in the folder for tonight. Um, and then there she did print hard copy. So I think the two go together. Though. Do you have one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have one. John doesn't need one because he doesn't like paper. No, that's right. I don't like paper. Um, so, anyways, the discussion on the 14th is going to be a lot of finance, audit, that kind of stuff. Um, the union petition thing. So I got back to them with what we discussed last meeting. And they wrote back, is the letter in there, Katie? I don't think so. I didn't see it. Could it be the, was it in the 9-9? No, because I just got this on the 18th. I thought I did. Um, 
Is it not? It's not in the poem. It doesn't sound like something. Well, actually. it's not very long. <laughs> it just says, I would like to request the town of Calvis policies, procedures, wages, and benefits. Yeah, I think I emailed it to you guys. Yeah. Because I said that I gave them the link to the policies right. and procedures on our website. So you did get this. Huh. Okay. Um, I might not have sent it to you, Katie. I might have It's just not memorable. It's really short. <laughs> right. But they have a nice pretty logo. Yeah. Color. So they agreed to review our policies and procedures online. Sandra had a, quite a workload at the beginning of the week, so we agreed that by the middle, Wednesday or Thursday of this week, she would get them the wages and benefits piece of the road three road crew employees. So that's, that's it. That's all the update. I'm going to make some copies of this. Thanks. Except for, except for John. Yeah, don't make John a copy. Yeah. Right. Um, ZA. The um, Planning Commission, we reviewed and approved the updated job description. It has been posted on in the Times Argus, Hardbook Gazette, Front Porch Forum, VLCT, and CBRPC. And the deadline for applications is October 7th. The Planning Commission met what was it, last week on Tuesday. And I attended because they had the ZA from Woodbury, Bob Martin, attend. He, you know, he contacted Jan and said, I'm really interested. I'm currently the ZA in Woodbury, but we thought we should do our due diligence and, can, and go through the process the way we would for anything, um, see what other applications we get, whether there's, you know, people that need to be interviewed or we want to interview. Even though we really liked him, he sounds like he has good experience. He was really interested in Callus because he said our zoning regs are so much more detailed and in depth. And yeah. Yeah. Does he live in Woodbury? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And he's only His name is what? Bob Martin. It's not the guy we thought. Oh, of. it isn't. Okay. No. Um, he gets four hundred, five hundred dollars every six months for his work in Woodbury. Um, and so he, he thought we were pretty generous to offer 400 a month. So anyway, so stay tuned. The deadline is the 7th. The Planning Commission would probably have, if they get anything, maybe they put it on their October 8th agenda. If they don't get anything, maybe they'll recommend for us for Monday the 14th. Because the process is that the Zoning Planning Commission reviews and recommends. That doesn't mean that we can't. <clears throat> you know, if they get two or three people and we want to meet all three, we have that right to do that. Mm -hmm. Do we have a zoning administrator now? Yes, it's John McCullough and Dorothy Naylor. And they're okay. Um, so, anyways, so that's kind of where we're at with that. And they both pretty much said, you know, we're just going to do this. Well, I knew that. I just wasn't yes. sure if they'd actually quit or something. No, and John, about. No, John so. said that he. He understood we need to get on the stick because he wants to educate. Right. For like six him. months. And he wants yeah. to be done. So, yeah. 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 yeah, I'm not sure we're going to take that over. And we're going to get all of our clips. <laughs> and my papers. Well, you like getting rid of papers. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I don't. Um, that would be more wasteful because you print up new stuff. That's right. Um, I have to meet with Alfred. Um, UVM capstone project. I've communicated with one of the students. <coughs> it's the lead student. Send an email to all of us. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try to schedule, hopefully this week, for the students to come and go on a tour with Alfred or Toby of the roads, so they get an idea of the Callus layout, and then we'll come together for a meeting with them about what we talked about with Dr. John Lenz, and he I sent them some information. Anyway, so that's in the works. Um, I forgot to email you guys the letter to Elizabeth Shedd, so I'll do that. Um, the town office was reviewing the holiday session. <coughs> <coughs> So Judy sent an email that they're reviewing the holiday schedule. Monday, October 14th is Columbus Day. Um, 
There's a select board meeting that night, but the office is closed. And she wants to move the November 11th Veterans Day holiday to, which is a Monday, but it's also the Monday of the final week for property taxes that are due November 15th. So they're suggesting that they move the Veterans Day holiday to the Wednesday before Thanksgiving Day. That's fine. I don't know, and we can update the personnel policy as we're doing it. So the so office- just, just so you know, I mean, I don't have a dog in this fight, but I know when this the state would do this, veterans would get upset. Fair because point. they, they, they were viewing that this as, day as, yes, as right. a day off rather yep. than yep. for what it is, you know, yep. acknowledging <laughs> and, and Point so taken. I just want to put that out there. That's Point taken. Yeah, I remember that now. <coughs> and I don't blame them, mm -hmm. the veterans. Mm -hmm. So I just... Mm -hmm. It's also the second Monday, which is regular meeting night. For right, us. right. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do we want to say that they should have the office closed because it's in observance of Veterans Day? On Monday the 11th. Or is on, the, on November 11th. Yeah, I, if, to me... I think well, my opinion is um, that if the staff would like to have that day before Thanksgiving off, then we should just, that should be a separate conversation. And mm -hmm. I don't see any problem with the board giving that to mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. important to them for whatever family reasons. Um, but I think they were, the Veterans Day thing should be separate from. I think they were looking at it that they wanted to have the office open on the Veterans Day holiday to accept taxes because that's tax fee. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. That that okay. was their thinking. And that okay. and that was good thinking on their yeah, part. But I get time. what you okay. say about that. So I don't know as long as that's the reason. Well that's what she clearly states. Yeah, okay. It is the Monday of the final week for property taxes with a due yeah. date of November fifteenth. Yeah. Okay. That Monday will be hectic with a huge pile of mail. So Judy has the right to set her schedule yeah, that's right. and Barbara's, yeah, that's right. but she doesn't have the right to do it for our employees, which is Sandra and part-time Barbara. Mm -hmm. But I think she makes a good, I think she's thinking about the town, you know, part of it and making it convenient for townspeople and taxpayers, but I don't want to overlook the importance of mm -hmm. recognizing Veterans Day. So, mm -hmm. um, well, maybe can we do? Is there a, such a thing as both fan? I mean, people will. A lot of people will have the day off and mm -hmm. be observing Veterans Day, and maybe a good day for them to stop in and pay their taxes. Right. Are there? Is there a flag we can fly or something else that we can do to acknowledge acknowledge our that it's Veterans I Day? If something. I bet Barbara could come up with some. She's really good with computer stuff. We could ask Barbara to come up with some really nice <coughs> signs to put in the windows. Um, you and know, maybe when we support a Veterans Day. The only other thing I could think of was to maybe, as a bonus, we give them everybody road room to the day before Thanksgiving off, unless of course there's a storm and the road crew has to work. But right. That is a separate conversation. I don't know. Right, because the, the road crew will have that day off. Right. Well, they, they have, have Friday it. off. Oh, oh. And we might, we might look at our holidays, of holidays and right. personnel policy. Because, I mean, a lot of places will have 10 holidays and which what 10 days they are kind of move around. Right. The other thing we can do is if, if we decide to keep the town offices open on the 11th, um, we'll announce that on Front Porch Forum, and the announcement can be acknowledging and sensitive to the veteran issue. To the veteran, mm -hmm. and, and you know, yeah, um, not just hey, guess what? We're open on Veterans Day. Who? Right. People will get feedback or flack for right. that, and I don't blame them. Right. No, I think that's exactly right. Yeah. I think that's a that's a really fair point. And and another point that Judy makes is that the road crew gets town meeting day off. But the office staff doesn't doesn't even though it's listed in the personnel policy. So we have some clarifying yeah. to do and juggling, and you know some places give you okay. Mm -hmm. These are the holidays, and you get to pick 
this many out of this list that you want to. Well, they should get take. cop time for that day, and they should get taken. Well, Judy gets paid the same mm -hmm. amount regardless. Yeah, Judy sets her schedule, so right. she can right. have she her day. Can she right. can have yeah, her day. That's good. Right. Um, and we know we've asked the treasurer typically, who is now because of the charter an employee, to come to town meeting, which we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyways, we, I mean, they're they're thinking, and I'm glad they're thinking about this. Mm -hmm. You know, it shows that they really care. Mm -hmm. I think we should. I think we should approve their request. They give us good reasons, but we should, in in communicating that to them, um, tell them that we are incredibly sensitive to the fact that it's Veterans Day, and we want as a town to honor our veterans. Um, so, in communicating that we're open to receive taxes, um, be sensitive. Yeah. And, and what are the other ways? And uh, yeah, and that's all the stuff that we just we already talked about. Right. Um, anybody else have thoughts? So the town, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So the town office is going to be closed on October 14th for Columbus Day, mm -hmm. open November 11th on right. Veterans Day. And are they taking Wednesday off before Thanksgiving? That's their, that's their proposal. And they always, well, they have Friday off. They always have Friday, Friday off anyways, right? They have yeah. Um, they, they will have accrued comp hours then, so. Right. Mm -hmm. So then that means that last week in November, the town office is only open Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know that's that's, that's going to be a hardship for know, the public. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. know. That's yeah. usually a pretty low key. It's a party week. week. Yeah, a lot of people don't work on that Wednesday. And they travel. Right, right. they travel. I, I actually think it makes more sense to close the office than to do the comp time in this situation because right. otherwise right. you're stuck with one person trying to keep an office up right. because that person didn't want to take the day off. Right. I see. Yep. I mean, you can do that when the employer's got 400 people in the building. So we are in a group. So I guess the motion is that we will approve their request as presented, um, noting that we are sensitive and appreciative of the fact that it's Veterans Day and we will honor it as such in other ways. And let that be, that message be packaged in any communication. Right, and that's going to be in the minutes. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Further comment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing aye. none. And what about the dealing with things Wednesday before Thanksgiving now, too? I thought that was part of what it is. I don't think you said that part. Oh no, maybe I didn't. I thought. Well, I said the proposal as we presented. Uh, the, propose. okay. the proposal as presented. Okay. Is this? Yeah. yeah. And she okay. clarified it in the minutes. Okay. So okay. my question is, will the sled board meet? Well, that's my on question Columbus too. Day and Veterans Day. That's my so, question too. I don't need to know that right now. Well, I would like to know <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to meet on October. 14th, I was figuring that we would. That's Columbus Day. Um, but I need to know about Veterans Day. And that we don't have to decide tonight. And the Veterans Day is November 11th. So is everybody good for Columbus Day? I see heads bobbing. Indigenous Day. Indigenous Peoples Day. Vermont, that's what we use. Right. I mean, it's a regular scheduled meeting day. Yeah, it's a second. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I'm just looking to see, like, does anybody have off from school or anything? But I don't think so. I'm fine. Oh, yeah, school. Um, I mean, they will close randomly on these holidays, but they're not on that one. Um, and then November 11th is Veterans Day. Oh, I wanna, I'm, I'm looking at some minutes, by the way, here. Uh -huh. Back in uh, August, the uh, of this year, yes, the town hall, town office reserve fund had sixty-five thousand in it, but we then voted to move five thousand to the steeplechase. So now it's down to sixty. Right. Right. So, yes. so steeplechase has already been pulled out as of that. Right. That was on the 26th. Yeah, so that yes. number is that, that right. Sharon in red is reflected that. All right, um, so that's 
No, I didn't get a real answer on the November 11th on whether folks want to meet that day or not. You want to think about it? They want me now. I just. I mean, that's a normal. Yeah, I mean, that's a normal day. So I'm just going to go with it. But that's a day that we would meet. All right. The other issue is, and this will come before us at some point, um, the Memorial Hall group that was working to um, purchase Memorial Hall. They've had their closing, and they are going to. If you read the letter that we sent to them when they asked us about money from the Conservation Commission Fund. It's very clear on what they need to do. I've been back and forth with Gus and Stephanie of Conservation Commission about what they need to do. So, right, so the first step is, is they are supposed to um, appoint an advisory committee and it is supposed to include members of the Conservation Commission. So Gus is going to be going to an upcoming meeting of the Conservation Commission. Okay. So just to give you an update on what's going on with that. Okay. And I think, I don't know if this one is, everybody should have that um, letter, but if you don't have it, I can email it around. <coughs> it was in the, I forget which, it was back in 2018 that we signed off on the letter. Not if people want to read it again, but you maybe don't need to read it until we get ready to meet with the Memorial Hall folks and the Conservation Commission. And I think that's. When are we going to meet with them? I don't know because Stephanie was going to get them on an agenda. I think it's really important because there's property tax issue sooner rather than later. Well, that because might be. It, it may be a sizable expenditure if, in fact, it ends up being that it, they they have to mm -hmm. fund that, and um, they may not be prepared for that. And the longer we defer meeting with them, at least on that issue, mm -hmm. um, the less able they're going to be, possibly able to generate. I can, revenue to, yeah, that's a. I mean, you made that point before. But um, I can I can ask yeah, us. Yeah. And Chris Cochran. And ask them if they've thought about this, and he may, they may have. You know, yeah. maybe they've already yeah. got it. <laughs> they may have. resolved. So let's yeah. find out. I'll ask. So, I'll ask them. I'm thinking it's such a you know, technical. Yeah, technical they might have something. Yeah. All right, I'll ask them. Okay. I'll get the phone pen. Okay. Is there anybody have anything else, or do you want to move on to minutes? Okay. Minutes. They are the minutes from the ninth. And you had you made a comment on something. I don't understand. There was something in the minutes from the ninth. The minutes from the ninth. Oh wait a second. I'm looking at August fifth. Oh, I said thirty percent is not a majority. That's what he calls it. Denise, we'll provide an update on her. <laughs> this is bizarre. I did. I missed the discussion. Yeah, it said like sixty-six percent. Majority is more than half. It has to be. Well, it has to be one more than fifty percent. One person more, or whatever. So maybe we take out the word majority. Is that what your point was? Well, thirty majority is thirty percent is not majority. Right. That's all I'm saying. I don't have a context for it. That, but right. as a as a person who wasn't part of this. Discussion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Is that the right number? That's got to be a typo. No, that's what they said. Thirty percent. I wonder if it's who says it. Tim Noonan. Um, Tim Noonan. So thirty so, percent of the workforce can move mm -hmm. a vote. Yeah. Well, and and thirty percent is right. actually two people. Right. right. That's all it takes. Of three. That's all it took. Um, it's two it's people. Less three. than one person, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Thirty percent is person. less than one. That's what I'm it's saying. Three. So in order to it's get not even a whole person. Yeah. Um, oh, you're right. So only one. So one, one can do it. You're right. One. You're right. You're right. <coughs> um, so it's a thirty. Per, so it's thirty percent. It, well, it has to be for the minutes to make it clear. It had to be two out of the three employees That's that voted. The thirty percent is one person. They're right. Okay. So then what I'm saying is to clarify the minutes. 
it is had to be two out of the three people, so maybe 30% isn't the right amount. Two out of three is 66 and two right. thirds. Can we just delete 30% from the minutes? Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be the. Two question marks. And yeah, that's because I didn't understand what Sharon was getting at. But I don't think there was anything else. It's right? on. Um, yeah, this thing with the CVPRC, yeah. GMT, that was neuter just, discussion. Nothing talked about. Is that something we just we could take, we just that, right, take that out because it was just to let you know what's going to go on this meeting. Okay. So take out that entire item. No, just take out nothing talked about. Okay. Because I did mention it. Yeah, you could just say. Um, Will, this be a topic. No, but you know how it says it says update. It's just to let anything under there is just to let you know basically what's going it's on happen. and what's coming up. Yeah. yeah. Just read the discussion. Um, yeah. All right. The other any old business or new business? Oh no, we have to approve these. Mm -hmm. Was there? Oh, and did you fix the reference for the the statute for real estate matters? Actually, you did. did no, I, well, I, I did was change the word, but I didn't check. Is oh, that I said statute reference. I'm sorry, I'm not statute sure. Statute reference. I'll um, add a comment to put the right one in. I see. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Thank you. Okay, so with those changes and the correct statute. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is that a second? Second. So the discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstaining? I'm abstaining. Okay. Um, do we have to go into You've got one session for anything? Do you want to do your other minutes? Other minutes? Oh. I don't think we can do the other minutes because I think we need to get a clarification from Sonia. Okay. And we have Which, not yet gotten that. Show me where. August 5th. It was a oh, the veteran, veteran exemption. The state allows for 10,000, and Callis needs to raise 300,000 in taxes. Oh, no, we asked her. What, I never heard. Didn't we ask her that? Yeah, was so here? what was the clarification? No, we didn't. What she did review these. The, I, I emailed these before I posted them. She asked me to send these to her before I posted them, so she just reviewed them. She made corrections as well, like really minor ones. But she didn't look at that? That's how she gave it to me. Okay, so, so could, you, could you, would you send them back to yeah. her with a, yes. that the board would like clarification yeah. on that? Or even um, just yes. copy and paste that paragraph and send her that yeah. paragraph right. and the say, board has Sandra, is this right? Clarification uh, for this amount. I thought we talked about this. But I asked her to review it for accuracy. Did, mm -hmm. not, did she respond to that, Katie? You see my email? Yep, let's see. Um, I want to say show more. Mm -hmm. Oh, she did. Did so she big. respond? I can't see. And that's a and, and we want a clarification. One of the clarifications we were looking for is a 40,000 dollar exemption or reduction or exemption uh, it's a 40 up to a forty thousand dollar reduction in evaluation not any actual tax amount because no one has a property tax bill of forty thousand right I don't know well, yeah, what I know they take, <laughs> so they take it's, 40, a, it's a reduction in evaluation of, value of forty thousand of the brand life so that's, that's kind of not written right um, uh -huh. I think that's so, important, though. That's something you want it, to be really so, good and, and the effect of that reduction of up to 40000 which probably every one would qualify for because every house is worth more than that. Uh -huh. um, what is the effect of that reduction in terms of dollars 
it, it, and is that is that what the three hundred thousand dollar number is? That's the effect. That seems like an awfully high number. Well, did right. They, did everybody? Right, and that's okay, what that's, didn't make okay, sense so to me. Right, so that's the point in asking Sandra. Because forty thousand dollars in valuation. If it was forty thousand dollars, it would it wouldn't come to that number. No. So I think I, I think this is this is this is not right. Okay, so we're going to ask you to clarify this paragraph that we don't understand mm -hmm. what it means. I, I think they mean we need to cover a three hundred thousand dollar in uh, grand list. In grand list. list, that might be right. It's going to impact the grand list by three hundred thousand dollars, and the monetary amount, mm -hmm. the monetary effect that is a much smaller number. I don't know what that yeah. is. So you're typing this, mm -hmm. so we can ask Andrew. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. great. So that's yeah. We can postpone this one. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until we're clear. Yeah, Until that's clear. It's not, yeah. I think it's not just us understanding what it means. It's having that rewritten so that anybody reading it will understand. Right, because if we look back at it, we want to know what we meant. We'll have the same conversation right. all over again. I have no idea what that means. Yeah. I, I, I kind of think what it means, but it's not what it says. Right. All right. Does it, I have a question about, um, this is maybe a Katie Cliff question. When Denise flags um, Sandra, Right in the yeah. comments, does that trip a note into her inbox? Yeah. Oh, cool. I don't know what this possible. I've got she's aren't you proud? Yeah, that's I've very cool. Out. Oh I'm not God. sure that she may have preferences set and set. I don't know if the user could set their preferences so that they're not. Or I'm not sure if she needs to well, enable it or not. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I get a notification every time someone. But Edit. you're already set up as a user, yes, and right. that and that's well, and and on the original string for the right. minutes. So. It would be good to know if she got that. Yeah, yeah. If it works, okay. because okay. All that <laughs> if it works, it's, it's a nice cool. try to make it. Thank you. Not, but did, yeah. not if it didn't work. You might have to put hat symbol in front of it. Hat. 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 The hat symbol. In front of the. I thought you said hat. So okay. Okay. hat on your hat. Yeah, All right. So do, do, do we have anything to go into executive session for? Uh, yes. Oh. And is it a personnel matter? Yes. Okay. Are you making a motion? I'm making a motion. Challenge to get personal. Okay. And it's personnel. All right. And I, I would move that we uh, it's a motion. Second. Nine thirty-two. Yes.